Hello! Welcome to uh, a, a brand new Sunday night adventure for us all, but welcome to Band of Badgers. I'm Dave and I am not uh, your DM for this session, but I would like to introduce to, introduce to you, introduce you, introduce oh. you to some new faces that you see here. Um, but before I do, how is everybody? We've just been a bit frantic. How is everyone doing? This is when you can talk. Keychain. You're not on mute. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I, I heard them with someone saying, oh, God. Oh, good. All good. Oh, all good. good, not oh, God. Okay, right. That's what I was just checking. So, um, so Darius and Anthony are things. both from SideQuest Press, and they have created a brand new campaign world for both 5e and Pathfinder 2e game systems, which focuses on the Mesoamerican and Mesopotamian lore. Now, over the next four episodes, we'll be playing what we call Lost Lights, and exploring this new world um, under their expert guidance. Yes, okay, right. Plus, uh, later this month, they will also be launching their material on Kickstarter. So do keep an eye out for that. We'll be sending out links as soon as we have them. Uh, just so keep an eye on to live chat and all of our various socials. Now, as Band of Badgers, we support writers, artists, designers, and creators, large and small, across the entire world. And if you would like to join a band, all you have to do is get in touch. And you can find all of our content on our YouTube channel on youtube.com slash band of badges. So, as I'm not DMing, I get to play for a chance. It is fantastic. <laughs> so, without, yeah, without like further that. ado, um, I will hand this session over to Darius and Anthony, um, who are going to tell us a little bit more about themselves and to also get this campaign started. Fantastic. Over to you guys. Right. My name is Anthony. I am rapidly filling in details on my character because I've had so much to do that I'm still wrapping her up. Uh, Dar and I have been playing uh, D&D for uh, a combined amount of 37 years or so. It's more than that. Uh, and we have always been writers and creators, and we thought it was a high time to make it into something that was more than that. And, you know, utilitarian, so they could actually use rather than just stuff we did at home. So, uh, we started this process about two and a half years ago, writing, getting everything prepped, uh, the creative process itself, and only recently did we go, okay, it's time to get this together and, and, and publish it, so let's, let's start a Kickstarter for it. So that's starting July 14th, and luckily we have some good friends, uh, old and new, uh, Jim, who uh, came in and was helping us get stuff organized and uh, a solid social media presence so we can get the word out. And then the rest of our friends who have been after too said, hey, let's play a game and so we can show what it's all about. Uh, you want to talk about the setting itself, I guess, a little more? Yeah, we can talk about the setting. So uh, we are, we have created the world of Zone with Death, um, which consists primarily right now of two separate continents, Maywar and Nadaj Harbe. Maywar is closer to a high fantasy setting. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of a lot of arcane history, a lot of um, there's a, a fallout from the Great War. There's a lot of experimentation done that have uh, twisted and changed uh, the creatures that lived on Mainwar in unexpected ways. Uh, it's very, very much a high magic fantasy setting. But across the Great Sea, uh, the wild ocean, wild ocean is called. Uh, Across the wild ocean, very separate from Mainwar, is the continent of Nadajar Way, where while magic does exist, uh, the rule of science and the guidance of the One Church, which has sprung about, has created a, a rigid, uh, you know, religion dominated uh, technological empire where batteries chamber and uh, chemical reactions come about through gas with power devices far more advanced than those found on Maywar. We have, we have guns, we have railroads, we have automatons that are, and the automatons have allowed uh, AI to advance. It's not really AI, but it's, uh, there's crystals within the automatons that sort of power them in ways that people don't quite understand. 
Um, so let's call it a techno theocracy setting. And, and, and I want to jump in and say that uh, the one we're playing in, Adash Arway, that's the second comment he speaks of, is inspired primarily by Mesopotamian, Mesoamerican lore and mythology, something we felt was missing from most current campaign settings. Uh, I will shout out Pisces. They've recently been doing some good work in areas that aren't standard European medicine, especially with that coming out of the, their new book that's just about to come out, uh, which is the wonky expanse, right? So they're really branching out this and this. So that's cool. But we felt like there was still a lot of space for exploration in these areas. So here we are. And yeah, as Anthony said, the, this current uh, little four shot adventure will take place on the, the continent of the Dasher Way, uh, primarily focused on the Great Railway, which is pushing out to the east into areas that the, uh, the hegemony, the coalition of independent countries under the guidance of the One Church, uh, they haven't really gone out to the east. They've been focused in other areas until very recently. And this railway is, is pushing out that way and giving the setting just a little bit of a, a Wild West feel to it. We're going to be picking the adventure up. Uh, sort of mid-action, you know, they are, our heroes have just come out of a, of a major conflict. We don't have, you know, catching their breath and maybe getting to know each other a little bit, those that don't. Are we ready to sort of go into the game or? Yeah, if, if you're ready. Yeah. 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 Say we're ready to, okay. Say we're right into it. Go for it. So we are beginning the setting in the, the city country of Hayaje. Um, I don't know if the people can see the map at all or the, the, the yet. Yeah. No, sorry. Oh, that's right. But uh, it is it is the sort of. I mean, I guess the closest would be sort of like a Constantinople or a Vatican City. It's, it's its own independent country, but it's a single city, and it's the seat of the church of the one church's power. Here, the buildings are very large and graceful, and they sort of uh, reach up towards the heavens. The one, the one church is, is focused around lighthouses. Uh, each lighthouse represents a different collection of gods that seem to have similar purposes. Um, you have, uh, in, in, in Hayaje, all the lighthouses are present, whereas in other countries, um, one lighthouse may be dominant. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the politics that control the hegemony originate from the city of Hayaje. Right now, Jaseya, Jen's character, has come to Hayaje on the behest of the, uh, at the behest of a group that she's been working for. She has been tasked with acquiring and returning back to her group with uh, a packet of documents that give that group the right to settle into uh, and maintain a settlement within one of the erstwhile forts that have been uh, popping up. Now, the erstwhile forts are, as the Great Railway expands to the east, uh, the expansion is being pushed by three major corporations, Mostrakan International, Etu Conglomerate, and the Krasij Company. These, these corporations take turns um, teleporting and gating out large quantities of supplies and, and people, and they will build these temporary forts that will protect the area while the railway pushes further and further east. Um, oftentimes, those forts are supposed to be taken down, but for a variety of reasons, they are not. Sometimes it's because they are intended to be settlement towns, other times because they may lose control of those forts to uh, raiders or even monsters that decide to do, make that place their lair. Um, they're not too concerned with it at this moment. They're more concerned with expansion than they are with consolidation. 
and they leave consolidation to smaller groups which want to settle the area and want to maintain control of these erstwhile forts and to bring, uh, you know, to uh, create civilization within the wake of the Great Railway as it, as it pushes peace. Um, this is an opportunity for many smaller corporations or those with different roles. And just say has is representative of one of those groups. And she has, through the help of um, through the help of a small criminal organization led by ISO called uh, those who listen. Uh, they, they who listen. This group has, has assisted Jaseya for reasons of their own in acquiring the funding and the contacts she needs to acquire these documents. And the only people allowed to have these documents, the ones allowed to purchase them from the one church, are those in, in good standing with the church. Those who are our members, those who have gone through a church education, those who have uh, paid their dues to keep their licenses. Uh, and Joseph is one of those. She's not a cleric, but she's a Makaziki. She builds machines. Um, Makaziki translates directly to the church. It's fair. It's yeah. And so she has a standing that she needs to purchase these documents, uh, but she did not have the contacts or the funding, and that's where they listen came into play. Also, a member of that group is Casalon, uh, played by Ben, who is playing a uh, a cleric with a, 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 a maybe a bit of a falling out with his own faith. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Um, the two of them are working, uh, you know, he's working for. Actually, I probably shouldn't be introducing everybody's character for them. I think I'm going to <laughs> this. Uh, ben, why don't you introduce Tesla? Kassalan is a cleric of the one church. He is a he is a merfolk, ancestry merfolk with a failing lineage. Uh, he uh, kind of talks with a traditional uh, cowboy accent. Uh, you can Kassalan go mal, but you can just call him Cass. He's a, <laughs> a right hand man to uh, oh. So, Andrew, I forgot your character's name, <laughs> and you're my boss. I said. I said. Yes. I'm uh, as his uh, right hand man. I do what she needs. Right. And they uh, who listen are involved in a. Uh, in a multitude yeah. of Sorry, just, just, just one of the interrupt, guys. Just the music is very loud. Can you? Yeah. So I was just typing out instructions to you. Your here. I'll actually pause it for a second. Your specifically, Dave, on the right side there, the uh, musical icon in the BTT. Your playlist volume control is what will control what there's output to the uh, stream, and everybody uh, can change the volume to whatever they want for themselves as well. Cool. Fantastic. There we go. Continue. <laughs> Game on. Game on. <laughs> I realized that wasn't playing the entire time. Oh, yes, it is. All right. So continuing on, uh, they do listen. Have a couple newcomers to their ranks. Uh, somebody else seeking to. Uh, to flee the grasp of the One Church, because while the One Church has done many things, uh, something that they try to control is are those with uh, arcane magic, those that that are spellcasters that do not get their spells from the gods. And it's not that these these people are not allowed to practice the craft, but they have to be they're licensed uh, by the church, and they must follow the laws uh, that the church sets forth for them. Some people don't feel like they can live under such strictures, and so they are searching for ways away. One of those people is Ava, played by Lauren. Uh, Lauren, you want to tell us uh, anymore? Ada is a young sorcerer with some interesting 
powerful magical abilities and she is being hunted by the one church who want to utilize her powers but she's now officially on the run because she knows they are after her so she's seeking refuge um towards the east to get away from them and accompanying Ada is uh, her friend and companion, a very large uh, specimen uh, known as a Gabarese, which are giants who live within the hegemony, have, uh, have joined the, the nations that they once were apart from. Um, they're about nine foot tall, nine feet tall, long lived, and with six fingers and six toes, including two opposable thumbs. Um, Anenki, Nenki, is played by Steve and is Lauren's companion and friend, or uh, Ada's companion and friend. Maybe you want to tell us more. Though. Yeah, Anenki, as you say, is a, is a Gabarese. They are the the giants of the desert. Um, Anenki is a as a wanderer, he's a guide. He's a, a, a scout. His intention is to rescue his friend, bring her out of Hemetu, out of the um, the areas uh, more under control of one church and, and make way east across the desert, you know, make way to a, a wilder area, more frontiers type land. And finally, there's a, a, a newcomer to the group, someone that is not connected with the others, at least not that they know. Uh, to Stan, they, they recently had a, as we, as we join our party, they have just uh, finished an encounter with church soldiers that were uh, attempting to apprehend them. And there was a very quick but intense battle. And in the middle of that battle, the Stan, a, a pillar of, of the one church, in fact, it probably represented its virtues more than, than any other person can, uh, decided to turn on his fellow soldiers and assist the group, and they do not know him or what motivated his turn. And so Dave, you want to talk a little more? I did want to read before Dave says, and I did want to point out, I think what you had in mind, just to clarify, that, and so I'm jumping in and say that is not that Dave's character, not that Destan attacked the other soldiers at all, but he turned on them by giving a, uh, the info that she needed to get out of it. Is that correct? Or not? Well, Warning them of the ambush. Yeah, but, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's one thing to, to go against orders, but they can attack them. Right. So just want to make sure that's it. Sorry, okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, Dastan, uh, Dastan is um, a planet of the One Church. Just just imagine Judge Dredd, and that's who you've got. Full body armor, giants, um, oversized sword, compensate for something, obviously. Um, and he's been in a situation where... <laughs> He, um, during this ambush, uh, his mentor and commander of, of the team gave the kill order. And this goes against the edict of the church and what we stand for. They have to be questioned, then punished, not just punished. And I disobeyed a direct order and gave the um, Ada a window opportunity to escape which then is ensnared in this fight and I have, I have now changed sides if I have and uh, Jen I don't think I gave you the chance to actually talk about your character I kind of talked over so can you well Joseph has a, a sketchy little past uh she works for the church and yet doesn't. She is part of the group called the Needles. Uh, it is a little bit freedom fighter, a little bit criminal organization. Um, and she is a goblin, but she also has, that is her ancestry, but her lineage is Rattan. And she no longer has a tail. So there's a long story behind that one. <laughs> uh, and that actually that's something that we didn't get into was the lineage system which is the idea that uh, the Rattan uh, and the Goblins are both uh, 
they arrived on the Dajar way, uh, fleeing a calamity on the mainland. In some cases, and in other cases, they were, you know, uh, brought there. But on Mainwar, the lineages are a result of, of the arcane experiments that were carried out by uh, other, uh, other world extra creatures. universal in, uh, invaders. Yes. And uh, as such, while a goblin may uh, look like a goblin, they may have uh, rattan, rat folk uh, heritage. And those traits begin to come out as they grow in, in power. In the case of Jose, she she began evincing those baton traits and feared feared what the one church would do, and so she cut off her own tail in order to hide her growing baton heritage. And uh, Anthony, do you want to talk about Ada and uh, Ada Nissen? How about Ice? Sorry. Right. <laughs> Dark Dar, Dar, Dar has a problem with names in the real life. I really so, characters in the class as well. <laughs> uh, so, Iso is my character. She is, um, you know, an early middle aged woman who was raised in a really rough area in the nation of Zyme. Zyme being one of the eight nations that makes up the hegemony, and the central nation wherein the uh, city state of Hayashi itself is located uh, within. So she's uh, had to scramble and scratch her way to uh, just get out of poverty. And so once she did, she decided to create a, uh, to, to attempt to create a criminal empire of her own, because that's how she got out of it. She figured I could proceed along this path and maybe do better for me, myself, and those others who are as unfortunate as myself. So she started a, a or took over uh, in media res, a criminal organization called David Lissett. And during that time frame, uh, Castlin, right? Yep. Uh, you got also it. became involved in the group. And so, and eventually, you know, she became the leader of the group and he, the, the second. And during that time frame, the group has somewhere between, say, 20 and 60 members. Uh, the, the law thinks is one of those ones that's hard to keep track of because they was in work at independent cells and not even everyone knows who else is in the group at the time. However, uh, the law did come down at some point, and uh, there's a lot of heat on the group, and so they went to ground. She ordered everyone to go to ground, and her and Castle are currently escaping Zyme to lay low for a while before returning at, at an undetermined later date. Well, uh, I'm in a favorite, right? What's that? I'm in a favorite, right? Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. And so, <laughs> it's, uh, and so as they uh, as we as we begin, they're on their path out eastward to maybe start a new power base before, before reconnecting with everyone. So, so. so that's it. Uh, let's get into things a little bit. Darkness blankets the holy city of Hayaje, seat of power for the One Church and the beating heart of the hegemony. To walk within the city was to feel insignificant before the towering stone structures stretching up towards the sky in supplication, like lost rays of light seeking a way home. Gas lamps dot the street at regular intervals, keeping the darkness at bay with merrily burning flames hidden inside lead crystal globes. Similar lights can be seen surrounding the buildings themselves, keeping them illuminated at night and casting deep shadows wherever the light fails to reach. Ayaje never truly sleeps, for the last meal of the day is taken well into the early hours of night. And though the last train leaves the station at midnight, the city streets are still full of citizens, not yet ready for slumber. But some areas of the city have mostly emptied, save for a few lost souls with bad intentions, best carried out under cover of darkness. This is where we find ourselves this evening, just 30 minutes before midnight, if your chronometer is properly attuned. A small city park with neat rows of fruit trees, already heavily laden with ripening pomegranates, dates, cherries, and green plums. Four channels of water running along the cardinal directions of the compass meet in the center of the park to form a large circular pond dotted with water lilies bursting with purple and ivory blossoms. And it is here that our that six of our bad intention never be wells have gathered. An orchestra of frogs and crickets fills the night air, so anyone attempting to overhear them would have to creep quite close. 
At such a range, these six individuals seem a little out of sorts, damp hair, skin gleaming with perspiration, shoulders slumped as they take in large, steady breaths of air. Five of these individuals are known to each other, but the six is a stranger, though not entirely unwelcome. What was that? What just happened? When in the hell did this city get so damn dangerous? Do any of y'all need healing? I think I'm fine. I'm okay. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm good. I kind of look to Gaston. Not you. Not yet. And then I look, uh, look to Ezra and just like nod. For, for, for Gaston, who's um, he's feeling pretty pissed off at the moment. So he's he takes off the helmet. You haven't seen any of the Paladins take off their helms before. They're always in their, their full-on garb. As he takes it off, he's, he's got black hair. It's all matted to his face, to his head. He's obviously really, really pissed off. He throws it down and he stomps over to, to Ada, grabs her by the throat and slams her into the train wall. Mm. I said, pull my gun. Who the hell are you people? I just... I just took down a direct order. I, I gave you an the, opening. Uh, axe attachment Who are you? To my blunderbuss and place it slowly under the throat of Dustan. I suggest you put her down immediately. Ada's starting to lose a bit of consciousness because he's got a tight grip around her throat. She's starting to pass out a bit. You've got a lot of guns on you, boy. A lot of guns. I release my grip a little bit and I'll cast the Zone of Truth. You still got a lot of guns on you. What's the, uh, it's a what's the area on there? Um, the area is, uh, it's 60 foot. Uh, so it's a 15, 15 foot uh, radi radius. Um, but it's, it's boom on me. I'd like to see if I know that and then just slightly edge out of the area. And back. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. 11? Yeah, no. No? Okay. So, I'll, well, nevertheless, I don't know exactly where it is, but she will she will ease back a little bit. Okay. So, Ada... Her, yeah, I'll let Ada breathe, because I, I don't want her to lose consciousness. Yeah. I, I, you, you don't understand. I just disrespected her direct order. Do you understand what, what that means? I need to know. It means you're seeing the truth for once. What uh, congratulations. Tell me you why. Bet. They wanted to kill you even before judgment. Why? Surely the choice and reason for killing is with the person perpetrating the act, not the victim. Ask your questions if you need to, but I suggest you already know the truth. Why are you so important? I just want to leave. I'm a traveller. I'm I'm, I have magical abilities. They seem to want that's not, to. That's not good enough. What do you know? I can. I will snap your neck. Give me uh, a damn reason. I, I travel quite far. I, I have special abilities that take me into other worlds, let's say, other dominions. So why do they want you dead? I think they want to use my abilities to find the gods. But I don't know why they'd want me dead. I know they want to use me for something, but I'm not sure what. And just on, uh, that's news to you. You are, you have pretty high rank within the church. I mean, you're, you're, You've never heard that they're even searching for the gods or that they're searching the dominions. That's that's a secret in and of itself that you are not aware of. Maybe even a, a secret worth killing for that if they got out that the church was doing something. Why would they be searching? There, there are no gods. We are the one church. The gods that left. They think they can find them again. Or well, they disappeared. They don't know where they are. I 
I don't like this. The truth you're, hurts. You're not, you're not able to lie, so... Tell the truth. I had to leave my family because it was getting too dangerous. Word of my powers was spreading and that's why they came after me. That's why I ran. And you hitched up the, with these... These are known criminals. Um, why? Am I in the zone of truth? If you're standing uh, next to me, you, yes, you've got yes, your yes. bus on my shoulder. I yeah. I, yeah, I just uh, I don't care how good looking you are. <laughs> you better watch your step. Why did I say that? <laughs> I just <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I put I, I put Ada down <laughs> and just kind of try and take in the, take in the information. It's it's impossible for them to uh, to lie to me and um, for anyone to lie for the next ten minutes. It's centered on me as well. Ada asked Dastan, "Why do why would they why would they want to kill me? I thought I'd be useful. Why did they?" Why are they coming after me in such a violent way? I don't know. They gave the order. They gave the kill order. And that's not our way. The book of the law says you will pass judgment. You think it's not your their way. You just haven't seen it yet. I've known my mentor more than 20 years but have you really known them i've known him yes he's trained me he got me into the one church i am the man i am today because of him now you're telling me my world is upside down that there are a lot of things are upside down at the minute where is this train effect? going they will be following us. I wasn't able to hold them back long. We should get on the train. Perhaps. The call for reinforcements went on. And you know that the uh, the Mastercon International Hayaje Rail Yard is, is just a ten minute walk. You guys are actually very near where you need to be. <clears throat> I kind of uh, lean into Esso. Uh, we got to get going, boss. It's if he's telling the truth, this could be bad. They will come. And they will bring more. And they will be heavily armed. And they will certainly I know, be because I make the things that arms them. <laughs> you got any spare? Not on me, but we, we can work on that on the train, maybe. Well, we should go to the train. Your call, boss. Expedient movement is advised. It looks like you're traveling with us now, she says to Distal. For now. You are Aizo, yes. Um, wait back up a step. No one called me that yet, and I wouldn't have introduced myself as such to you yet. So let's back up a step. Um, if you want to ask her instead who she is, she'll say, she'll say that, yes. She'll say that, yes. And who My name you? is Aizo, and I'll leave it at that. I I'm no nervous, Aizo. Every time I walk forward, you take a step back. I kind of step in front of him a bit, not to obstruct her view, just I've, to make sure he's not getting closer. Yeah, yeah I've, I've found that uh, not answering questions when under a spell like this is better than answering them. Perhaps he doesn't like her throat being crushed. I was about to say, uh, given what you've just done to me, I'm not surprised. Not they may have that. done that, but they would have done worse. That I believe. I have to remind you, I'm the one who saved you back there. I did this back there. No, you would have died. Well, you may as well come along and answer the question of why you did that. Who knows, you it might change your mind. You. Or open it. Just say if it's going to call over her uh, DB, Badger Butt, mm -hmm. and hop on. <laughs> So your little uh, your little automaton sort of you know scampers over. It's a collection of 
steel and, and gears and shaped into legs and arms resembling a roughly resembling a badger. A very large badger. A very large badger, maybe the size of a, a, of a pony. Yes. It is definitely rideable for a tiny little three foot four goblin. Steve's character is like, it's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is tiny. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shall we go to the train? I, th I think that might be a good idea. For any I more suggest we go separately. A group of six such as us may draw attention. And some of you already draw more attention than others. <laughs> so I suggest we split. It's just a short journey. We split into twos. <laughs> and Isa will simply start walking off and expect to cast a follower. Or Before following, following it, um, I turn to Dave's character and go, we're going to put our guns away now? I got here by my hands. My gun is already sheathed. Oh yeah, it's got a massive. So, your boys, are we cool? We're cool. For now. Peachy. Come along. Nah, I just go to follow. Ada gets up. She's still rubbing her neck where she's been strangled. She's not sure who to partner up with. She's a bit hesitant. Still in shock. I still grab Ada's arm. And uh, march away from the park towards the station. It's you and me, the stun. <laughs> <laughs> Poor girls is getting manhandled. <laughs> Rule of thumb: stick with the biggest guy. Yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Come along. So it's a short walk. It's a short walk to the train, train station. Um, the train station is a low domed building made of a dark emerald slate. The western and eastern portions of the building are flanked by two towers carved in a spiraling striated pattern of emerald and ivory hue. The building is accessed by great glass double doors which slide open of their own volition when the slightest pressure is applied to them by hand. This late at night, the ticket stalls are closed, so it's a good thing your tickets have already been purchased. That is except for Destan, who was not intending to take a trip when he woke up this morning. A small group has already gathered to board the train, while still others have been admitted onto the train during pre-boarding. The train cars, uh, the the upper portion of the train is where the passenger cars are, where the low, while the uh, lower part of the train is, uh, the, the last remaining cars are full of supplies and foodstuffs and other things. Um, and you will have to, the stun will have to figure out for how he plans on boarding the train because the ticket spells are closed. I I still have my um, my church badge. I'm still. You, I'm you still have your Sawar ID. Uh, plate plate mail of my. Plate. Yeah. And no one's. So every, everyone has a. Uh, probably not. Everyone has a Sawar ID or a Sawari, which is the bracelet uh, with various charms on it that show. Certain things like whether you're licensed to carry a firearm, whether you are a Makaziki, and you know, uh, with that licensure, um, which nation you're from, a few other pieces of info like that. Think of it like a complex just identification, right? And so your Solar ID still shows that you are a, a servant of the One Church. So, yeah. Quick question, Andrew. Uh, are on the level where they are counterfeit or? What's that? Uh, are, are yours counterfeit? Or do you have real ones? Oh, no, no, ours are, ours are real. Yeah. Ours are real. And all, because, because all they say really is that we are uh, from the nation we're from. Uh, yours is interesting because yours is going to be differently colored than everyone else's because you're not native to this continent at all. Um, right. So, you know, it'd be different. But yeah, we, we have no need to, we, we have. It, you, we have the ability to counterfeit stuff as we need it, but right now we're just wearing our regular ones because yeah. No, that's, what, that's why I asked, though. I was just yeah. curious. No, no, we have that option. I, I have that built into my character, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> so is uh, Destan going to attempt to, uh, you know, try and, and talk his way onto the train using his, his background? I, I'm, I'm still decked up as an arbiter. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I don't know if Jen did that on purpose, but whether you did or didn't, that's pretty awesome because you, um, you, you were the two most official. So going on together, it doesn't seem that abnormal. Like I think, yeah. Hmm. No, it's perfect because I have all the rights to all the things that I'm currently wearing and using, and I have a church official with me. Even better. He'll test in his armor. And I get a bonus when I'm talking to him. So I'm not sure if I do anymore because is he actually a church official now? I mean, <laughs> until he hears differently. <laughs> Who knows if it's even been reported yet. But uh, that being said, as you guys approach the train, it looks like they're ready to begin boarding. You guys are just there at the very last moment. And so the small group that's gathered other passengers that are seeking to travel to the east uh, begin to line up and start boarding the train. There's a uh, there's a, a train official just sitting there in, uh, at the front checking everyone's uh, bracelet and looking for their uh, little ticket chip. Um, so, you know, they have a um, just a small engraved wooden disc uh, that is being used as a ticket and they're checking that against the ID and then letting them board the train. If, we, if we're close to leaving, um, can I just sort of hang on the platform, keep an eye out, see if we're being followed just before we mm -hmm. leave and then, then step on at the last minute? Yep, go ahead and uh, make a... Uh, wisdom perception roll. Uh, not very good. I said 11. And you don't see anyone. Um, you know, there's, there's always people milling about, but no one stands out to you as, as anyone looking for you guys. Okay. We don't appear to have been followed just we take our seats and discuss further where are we going anyway so we're all separated though now right we're in groups of two yeah in different areas of, okay yep so as soon as, as soon as um as soon as we get on the train um i'll just push Josef straight into i'm thinking the harry potter compartments open the door push her in yeah, they are each the the train has like private quarters. This is going to be a long trip, and so each train has like a yeah the, the compartments where, mm. um, you know, you're basically going to live for the next two weeks. So. It's it not was... a fast moving train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, think about, you know, as the as the two main railroads advanced in the Americas. Uh, and compete against each other. So train, your trains probably went 30 to 50 miles an hour. The latter only being when they were on oh. wide open planes, not very fast, right? It was about efficiency and how much they could carry rather than their speed. But um, in the VTT, by the way, I don't know if you guys, I think you guys do see, I have a map up there too. So this train is taking us from High Yasri, which is where we were, right? Mm -hmm. To down that southerly route, to all the way down to Shizax. Uh, stopping by always along the way. So. Yeah. So you guys each, uh, you know, two by two, make your way up there, uh, board the train. Oh. The... Is that something, Jen? Oh, so if you're showing that on screen there, which uh, that's fine, you can also just mm. zoom way in on the Dodger, way on the right. Uh, Dave, if you want to show the people what we're talking about there too. And it's that desert area on the right there. Yep, there you go. And then right click right there, you got it. It zooms really far in. Yeah, it's a, this map uh, I, This map is really huge. We had this done by an artist named Dharma Balloons, who he's really good at what he does. And so, so yeah, he's going to say, Austria, there's always, and then a little bit south further is um, even further is She's X. And She's X is the last uh large city 
before as the railroad pushes out to the east. Yeah, you'll see that you'll see the, the track that goes east just stops at a certain point, and that's because that's where it's currently being built. So this train is going to be headed all the way to Shizaks, and then it will stay there for you know for supplying, and then it will head on out all the way to the uh, as far east as they've pushed on the railroad to the terminus, as they say. Yeah. Cool. Most of the people here, uh, most of the other passengers, look like they're settlers or people that are are leaving behind uh, Nadaj Harway society for reasons of their own. <clears throat> but if you all board the train, um, Dastan does get a few looks because he doesn't have his ticket. But they it's take a look at your armor and your on. ID. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't say anything. They just, you, you get some hard looks. Um, nobody likes giving out free rides. Can I, can I throw but... someone out the window and say, no ticket? <laughs> <laughs> so your, uh, your train consists, uh, the, the passenger cabins consist of two separate cabins um, separated by a common dining area. As you guys move on towards the back, you can, you can see that. There looks to be uh, uh, is, the, is the train moving yet? Not yet, you guys are still boarding. Uh, there looks to be, uh, you know, eight to 10 other people, eight to 10 other travelers that are uh, also taking up passage to the east. But you guys are free to choose your uh, choose your cabins as close together or as far apart as you want. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I just got unceremoniously shoved into one, yeah. so, you know. <laughs> Literally, open the door, shove her in, I step in, shove, slam the door. We'll, uh, Rude. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to grab one across from you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to try and grab one in the vicinity as well. Yeah. I just follow because I'm still shaking up. I'm like, I'll just go whoever's going to protect me the most. As, as we walk by the, the, uh, oh, oh, so no, um, are there, so I guess if there's no general seating in the cabin we're talking about, it's all just those divided things. Right. They're all, they're all just divided for our folks. There's enough room that you guys could all gather in one compartment and talk. It just wouldn't be comfortable to live in. No, I was just thinking along the lines of uh, trying to perceive if anybody was paying, paying a special attention. If everyone's in their individual areas that are shut, then there's nobody to look at. Right? Sure. Right. Okay. So the opportunity to check out the other passengers would be in the central dining car. The Correct. Area. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Have we not passed through there yet? So that depends on where you guys, so there's, uh, you guys want to be at, towards the front of the train or towards the, you know, or towards the uh, back because the, the two passenger areas are divided by the common dining car. So I guess that's up to Dave and Jen since they went to theirs first. Yeah, I, I guess it's up to Dave since he threw her in one. So did you go towards the front or the rear? Um, wherever we brought it onto, I, I probably uh -huh. would have stayed somewhere in the middle because getting on the first carriage uh, may have been okay. Weird, and I don't particularly want to go all the way down to the front, so I think um, I want to get on somewhere in the middle and literally the first room that seems the first suite that's empty. You know, I can check a few doors in the way. This one's empty, throw it open, throw Giuseppe in there, and I close the door behind us. Okay, so you guys are probably, yeah, since you board in the middle, you, you would have been in the rearmost. Yeah. Uh, rearmost place so you didn't get a chance to walk through the dining area or really people watch very much no so you could you know press your faces up against the, the downsides to door. being so small and uh you know just and Destan, your your cabin is gonna be pretty crowded you know Destan is not small and now you have a very large badger just taking up space it's my badger bot Bibi. You say you say we got two rooms. Put put Badger in the other room. <laughs> you go in the other room. <laughs> Bibi stays with me. Hmm. 
So, have you learned a lesson today? No. I need to know who... I need to know why we're here. Where is this train going? Oh yeah, he wouldn't actually get this was just Jim, there you go. He wouldn't actually know where the train's going at all. Oh, it's going... So it's going south to Shizaks, eventually. We're going south. Where, to Shizaks? Yes. Then where? That wasn't the original plan, but uh, your people threw a wrench in that works. Yeah. I trying to kill someone. I understand that. I mean, thanks for the help. But you got to know not, that the, 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 the church is... You are. Your church has issues. Our church is the law. Your church is wrong. We're going around in circles. You know this. Mm-hmm. You expect me to believe you're on the whim. I don't know why my commanding officer gave the kill order. It was wrong. Maybe I'm wrong for stopping him. You're not. You haven't shown me anything yet. There's no reason to trust you. You've given me no information. But All I know is what he did. Why would you trust someone who was going to kill without proper judgment? I trust him with my life. But he went. Couldn't trust the him with code. hers. He went against the code. It's the only thing I was. Protecting. Should tell you something. He went against the code. But you have all told me nothing. So where are the others? Let's go find them. So I mean, the cabin across, right? Yeah, and in ours, I'll be I'll be talking to you, and I'll just say quietly. She's she's very soft spoken generally, and she'll say, "Listen, this has added a wrinkle to the process here. You know the plan. The uh, the sorceress is going to be a problem on her own." Due to her simple naivety and lack of worldliness, we'll have to watch out for that. She's innocent, but she could also be harmful to the plan. So, you know, you know the general rule of thumb. Let people live until their living causes us trouble, right? Absolutely. Meanwhile, meanwhile I absolutely distrust the the arbiter for oh, for obvious reasons. So he's a dick. Yeah. Well, beyond that, he's the law. So we we mustn't let him know, of course, who we are. Um, so as far as it goes, the cover story will simply be you're beholden to me as a retainer that I've paid mm -hmm. some sort of bodyguard or escort. No Obviously no mention, no mention of the organization to, at this point, anyone. Uh, the only one I completely trust is the, uh, is the galleries. Um, but that's because they're generally stolid, stolid, honest people. So we'll see. Try not to shoot anyone along the train itself, please. I'm not promising that. Okay, just trust. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I love at that, that point that you hear, said. <laughs> at that point, you hear a heavy knock on the door. It's just on. Uh, the, the, the good old, the good old police knock. Yep. Oh, I'm sure that's what that's what he does. <laughs> right, I, I go to the door. Who is it? Avon. Just say if it's standing there with their arms crossed, just looking up at him like he's kind of being a douche. I imagine there's a people in these. Sure. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a people. Yeah, I imagine I actually, even though that probably is a standard on trains only with, with ours, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll make sure the helmet is off again. Hold it on to, under my arm. Oh, uh, God, there's a waiting. human under that. And then I just <laughs> put my hand over the peephole. Let me in. Do I open the door? You box? know that that doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, it's it's fine. Let's talk to it. Okay, I slide it open. I step straight in. I I try to stop him, but like I can't. <laughs> so I just go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does it let my shoulder pads <laughs> step in sideways? <laughs> Are we going back to the eighties with the shoulder pads, like the? It's coming back. <laughs> Everything comes back. If if World of Warcraft has taught us anything, it's that the bigger the shoulder pads are, the better. It's true. 
Well, so I'll uh, scooch in behind the stone. So you said your name is Azo? Close enough. You seem um, very cool, calm, and collected compared to the others. I guess you're the one in charge. No, it's just better to be quiet and listen. Find that when you speak, you give away distinct advantages, generally. I'm used to being loud. As is my ally here. So you guys should get along just fine after you decide not to shoot each other. I kind of leaned down by, she didn't mean that, Josefa. <laughs> You're not that loud. You kind of are. No, I, oh wait, she meant, you meant me? That's damn rude. She'll just give a wry smile. And uh, so she sits back, she, she's got like a, she's dressed in a, in a, a thalb, if you guys are familiar with that, it's just a, a cloth, um, full body garment that has zippers. Uh, this is common in Zion and Hina too. Zippers at the, at the sleeves so that you can unzip sleeves and take them all the way off. So right now she's sleeveless and assumingly her sleeves are put away somewhere, but um, she, uh, she has one side of her head shaved and then her long black hair braided on the other side. So she leans back, crosses her legs and says, all right, so we've got a long two weeks ahead of us. All we have to do is make sure that your prior allies don't have representatives on this train still hunting us, or more specifically hunting Ada. Reinforcements were called. They will find a way to board this train. And when but they have eyes and ears, them. they have eyes and ears everywhere. I, I'm well, well familiar with that. Quick, quick question. Is Dave's truth still no. active? I don't think no. so. It's only 10 minutes. No. Oh. Speaking of Ada, where is she and the other? Gunneries took her to a, they went to a, a nearby stall as I was watching them as we walked in. So they should be, well, 13 plus, uh, <laughs> not 14 actually for perception <laughs> to see which one they went into. I think 14 is okay, good right. enough. You know so, which one they went into. I forgot. I made a little wisdom, a little perception. She's, uh, she, she's with a net. Oh, no, I get, I get proficiency. So 17, I do get proficiency. Okay. So yeah, so, so he'll, she'll, Izo will say, will say, yes, uh, they're, they're just one over from, from us. She's with Anaki, right? Yes. Yeah. She's in good hands. I can go get them. Well, let's, let's do this, I think. Let's, uh, let's all make our way to the uh, food car. I'm hungry. And there's nothing too out of the ordinary of a group of travelers on the train sitting near enough each other to share in a polite conversation. Mm. Uh, I don't know about polite, but okay. <laughs> and as you say that, the train begins pulling forward and leaving the station. Just on, then, you know that means no interrogation, right? <laughs> when, I have, when I have finished my mission, then we will talk. Do you have presentable clothes? Uh, I don't know what you wear under those, that armor generally. You might... They might behoove you to go and remove that armor. And... No? Okay. This is what I wear. I, I kind of knock on his um his armor like, you're going to sweat, boy. You're going to sweat. It's going to get a lot harder where we're going, yes. This is, you this may is regret that we decision. Sign up for. When we join the church, this is what we do. Sign up for heat stroke. I love it. From dawn to dusk, we are in this armor. When on duty, we are in this armor. Well, good news, boss. We don't have to kill him. He'll do it himself. That's <laughs> that is. Uh, it, it, it could be. It could be the case later. Good luck to you. Um, well, like I said, I need a drink, so we'll meet okay. you up there. To maybe, maybe go get them and stagger your entrance, and then she'll just sidle past you, kind of. Use you and her barely fit through the doorway together, so she'll just sidle past you and just head towards the restaurant car. I I trust I'm um, just I'm gonna be the one who gets your drink and food when you find Yeah, that's, that probably makes sense, yeah. No. Uh, typical. <laughs> uh, I mean I can get you something, just sir. Uh, no, I was making typical attorney comment. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Anthony, no, how, how did you get you on that one? I was gonna say I'm, I'm, I like I may be an attorney, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> you will I, be. Don't worry. It'll I, come. Yeah, I was gonna say talk to me again in five years. Yeah. Like, start to become an asshole. At that point. <laughs> so we can go up to the. Who am I still going to get? Uh, Ada and Aneki. Yes. Oh, well, I okay. we did. So that's yeah. That's it. Yes. That's a yes. Okay. I will go as quickly as my little tiny goblin legs will carry me since I left BB back in the sleeper car. I, I was gonna ask, did you if you brought her or not, but No, I I, I I let her hang out and chill for a little bit and kind of keep an eye out. Uh gave her the I, watch command. Yes. I will knock on the door. Who's that? There's someone at the door. Who's that? It's me. Oh. I, I open the door. Hi. Joseph. Hi. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> Come down just a little bit farther. I'll, I'll so I don't a, have to yell. I'll take a knee. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to go get food and drinks and kind of talk without really looking like we're talking. It's supposed to be sneaky. It won't be. But come to join us. Just thought knows no interrogation. Ada notices her hand is starting to vanish. She, she, she can feel she's her powers are getting sort of out of control again. And yeah, she knows Ooh. she's feeling dehydrated and hungry. And yeah, she goes, I think it's a good idea. I can feel myself being pulled wherever I normally go. That, that looks str hmm. Yeah, it'll come Drink? back. Just, I'm Water? trying to stop myself from being pulled into another dominion at the minute. Maybe keep that hidden for now. Yeah. Though it is kind of hidden all on its own. But yeah. we'll keep it extra hidden that it's hidden. Yeah. I had it in my sleeve, it's fine. <laughs> do, do I notice this from behind Joseph? <laughs> Is, is to stand there. I didn't go into. I didn't go for a drink. I was just no, turning the other way. No. Watch what uh, Joseph you're, doing. But you're within. You're within eye shot of uh, of Joseph, yeah. yeah. So I can see you're still wearing your full plate mail, carrying a long rifle and fully fully weaponed up. Yeah. I'm, I'm just sat in the bar with a shot for dust Dustan, looking really upset. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll join you, Joseph. Just, uh, just one moment, and I'll, I'll go back into the room and pick up the blunderbuss and, and axe. <laughs> Blunderbacks. Seeing as we're dressing for dinner, I shall come appropriately attired. We could have right. a full-on murder mystery on this train. <laughs> so, is it is it no shirt, no service? Luckily, they didn't say anything about no guns, so... <laughs> That's a good thing, because I think we're all packing. <laughs> so, uh, weapons in tow, some of you fully armored. Uh, you mm -hmm. make your way to the, the common dining cart. Uh, it's just set up with tables, and um, it does have a, a bar set up there with a, a bartender behind there. Um, but the actual food is probably handled elsewhere because you don't see any on-site kitchens. Um, you're free to, looks like the, the seat, you know, there's no, there's no one to uh, seat you. So it appears that it'll, you know, find a spot, claim it as your own. You're not the first person in the dining cart, but you are one of the first. There's, um, there's one other person there already having a, a seat by themselves. Uh, a uh, tall, uh, fairly thin gentleman with mid-length wavy dark hair brushed to one side and held in place with uh, way too much hair product. Um, and a, a pair of thin rimmed glasses perch on his nose and he has a drink in his hand just sort of enjoying the atmosphere by himself. Is that a dig at me about the way too much hair product? No, just... We're, we're just <laughs> digging on you in general tonight, Anthony. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
but there's plenty of tables open and um, the bartender is, is there. Hey, has the train started yet? Yes. Uh, I guess you, got, you missed that. Uh, when you guys left the car, I mentioned briefly that the train has started to pull forward. Um, it's going very slowly and without much of the noise and smell that our trains have here, this train is driven by a gas powered chemical reaction. It drives very clean. It still has the noise of the pistons going up and down, but the, the smokestack is nowhere to be seen. Um, but it's, it's pulled out of the station and it's currently making its way through Hayaje uh, at a very slow pace as it's still within the city, inching forward. So there, there are no other stops until we reach Oise, is that correct? Am I that's correct? Unless you have something else. Uh, there's, there's going to be, uh, there's probably going to be one or two minor stops along the way as they take on passengers, but there's going to be no major uh, layovers. No, not until you reach uh, Shazax and in Hamatu. Okay. Uh, are any of the minor stops within the city itself? No, uh, it won't. It won't stop until it's a couple days out. Okay. Anthony, have you sat down? Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I just come over and I just bring the food. I, I, I'm I, guessing I know what you eat. And... Yeah, you know that she likes a, there's a sour pomegranate uh, uh, fermented juice that uh, they serve in him into that she drinks off of so. Yeah, I just uh, I'll have one of them as well and I just bring it and sit down next to you. And... Oh, but yeah, I buy, I buy a jug and some glasses. <laughs> the uh, the bartender smiles and nods and, and you know, uh, gets it all for you, gets it all ready for you. Um, your tickets were very expensive, expensive, but they were also uh, included the dining. So outside of any tips that you might want to leave, you're not going to be charged for food or drink while you're here. Are you, um, um, well, you are not. The Ston, on the other hand, uh, maybe. In a... <laughs> just charge it to the church. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, when I get to the bar, I'll just. Is there like um, a jug of water? Like they have water, everyone, yeah. Like table water for everyone, but just the jug. I'll take mm -hmm. two glasses and I'll take the jug and I'll just sit down with it. Are, are we all set together? Well, I'm mm. going to sit with, with Azo now, yeah. It's, uh, the tables aren't that large, but they you, you can probably move some chairs over. You can't move the table, they're bolted in, but you can move the chairs around. I just... Either side of the aisle, so we could have two tables either side of the aisle. You can do that as well, yeah. I, I just picture Daston not giving a fuck and just loudly moving a chair to its big <laughs> as they do As they do walk in and, and go to sit, I want to attempt for anybody who may be paying attention to what's in. Ah, uh, yes, I, we saw that you were in the uh, in one of the partitions next to us. Please come join us. And I'll attempt to... Pretend like deception. you them? Yeah, deception okay. for anybody who might be paying attention. Is, okay, that is a... This is a 19, actually. 19? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you know, you do that, and you know, there's only one other person in the card. And... I apologize. It's a 21. 21, yeah. Okay. And he glances over at you, uh, you know, as you, as you loudly speak, and smiles slightly, and then returns to his drink. Yes, of course. You want me to fuck him up, boss? <laughs> I'll go get drinks. I think I already brought a, a big jug for everyone. Oh, I thought it was just for Izo. No, no, no. That's good because I can't see over the counter. Well, I've, I've got I've got a spare glass, so I put the oh. spare glass and I just pour you a glass of water. Come sit down. Prop my gun up beside me. The 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 blunderbuss. Real quick, because I didn't do this earlier. What's everybody's passive perceptions? Not great. <laughs> Eight or sixteen. Uh, passive perception. 
So it's just going to be proficiency plus wisdom bonus plus 10. Yeah. Notwithstanding any other strange you know, benefits or random stuff. Thirteen? Thirteen for just Yeah. And fourteen for Isaac, so it's not much better. Dastan is fifteen. Sorry, is that sequential? We just did thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. Well, it looks like that way. Did you get everybody? I got I think Sorry. I got everybody. No, I where, oh. where's mine again? Uh I had yours. Oh wait, I did not get yours. So it's 10 plus wisdom bonus plus proficiency. Bonus. I think 18. Nice. That is very. Uh, no, it's 13. It's 13 because you're proficient in, perfe in perception. Oh. oh, right. Yeah, I was doing wrong bit. You know me. Okay. 13. That does change it just ever so slightly. Oh, so it's not the normal proficiency bonus. It's if I'm proficient in it. Yeah, if you are proficient in it. So it's your oh, less than no. 10. Oh, no. Mine's 10. Mine is straight <laughs> up 10. She is you far too what... busy making things. Yeah, you know, you're the you're you're the yep. yeah. <laughs> Wisdom right. was almost my dump stat. Almost. <laughs> if that's the case, then as you guys are, are getting settled and, and taking your drinks and, and looking around, you do notice that the the, the guy at, the, at his table every so now and then, every now and then, you know, uh, surreptitiously writes a little bit down on a, looks like he has a notebook that he's uh, making a few notes in and then returns to his drinks. I'm going to assume that Jaseth is blissfully unaware of this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Destan and, um, and Ada notice that. Yeah, Ada nudges um, Anarchy and says, I think there's a man, he's making notes, I think he's watching us. And I point over to him, was that that man? I'll try to with that just look over. Um, is there a, any distinguishing features about him? Um, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't, um, he doesn't have, well, actually make a, uh, what do we have? Man, there's just too many systems. Is, do we have investigation here? Yeah. Yeah, make a uh, intelligence investigation. Actually, if I may. So we do play, we play this, we play Pathfinder 2, we of course, and we've been playing Vampire as well. So it's easy to get all these mixed up. If I may, <laughs> just make a suggestion to the team. Mm -hmm. If you're just looking at someone and trying to figure out who they might be, mm -hmm. that'd be insight. Investigation requires oh, like, yeah, your boots on the right tech work like that, yeah. So why don't we why don't we try insight check? Uh, and that's always going to be the part that's the most confusing is skills because they all overlap in weird ways in different systems, right? But... That's a five. That's a five. No, you can't. You, you, nothing seems too out of place. He just looks like a, a regular guy um, enjoying, you know. You, you didn't see him make any notes when she pointed it out. It was you know whatever he was making. Um, he was done with it, but you do notice that he does have the notebook in front of him, just sitting on the table. Okay. Other than that. Is is my character aware of that as well, did you make? Well, Ada, Ada brought it up, so I think all of you guys at this point. Yeah. I, um, I kind of whisper in Anthony's ear, you want me to go check it out, see if he's on the level? No, I think just, as usual, have your hand in your gun. You got it. We don't. We don't want to tip our hand, especially this early on the trip. That's fair. We should uh, keep our conversation low. Yeah, I, th I think we all got off on the wrong foot. Hmm. How are you feeling, Ada? Are you sufficiently hydrated? I feel a bit better now. I'm still exhausted and just tired. My throat's a little sore still. I catch mm. a glance over it to stand. <laughs> <clears throat> I take Joseph's. Uh, just, uh, just, what was it? Joseph. 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 I take your cup of water and then I just pass it over to Ada. Thank you. What's that is? 
technically your fault. That's done. That's why I'm giving her a glass of water. I say, it's fine, it's fine. I can detect the tension and I kind of want to smooth it over a bit. So, what is the plan? We're on this train for a while. Exactly where are we headed long term? Hazel? Well, this takes us to Ois and then she's X and then after restocking takes us east to the edge of the Great Railway. Uh, the slow but inexorable progression of the railway means that these you may have heard of the erstwhile forts that uh, they set up and then break down as the railway continues. So tentatively, uh, Cass and I were going to be going to one of those and try to make a new life uh, at an erstwhile fort. So, some of the erstwhile forts, as you may know, um, remain and, and aren't, aren't destroyed because enough people have settled and appealed to the, to the corporate structure and to the one church to allow them to make a permanent settlement there. So that was loosely our idea. Out on the frontier, you don't have to worry about the law as much as she, she motions over to, uh, to where just is. So <laughs> it's a good place to make a living. Uh, just say it. You also know that you have uh, a contact with the needles and that's who you need to make contact with when you get to she's ax. Yes, and that so, was through ISO, wasn't it? No, th so they put you in touch with ISO, and now you're returning um, oh, okay. with, what, with, with what you were sent to get. Um, and so you're supposed to bring it to them and then await further instructions that she's at. Okay. But nobody else necessarily knows that, just you. Okay. Well, that's where I'm going. I have someone to meet. Good a plan as any, I suppose. Um, the edge of the desert would uh, suit us for the time being, at least. Till the next wave of expansion brings the likes of the Arbiter there to our doorstep. Yeah, it's a good place to center oneself and decide where one will go from there. Yes. Further east, most likely, but for now, yeah, we can we can restock. We can, as you say, recent. I I take a sip of my my glass, and then I'm just listening to everyone's so-called plan. I just give out a big sigh and slam the cup down and say, "You you you're all fools if you think you can get away. You can't stay on this train until it gets to the end. This isn't a joyride." They know we're on this train. They will stop us while we are still on this train. And your plan is to sit here in a canteen car and enjoy the ride. This is not what's going to happen. You need to be prepared that we are going to be under attack at some point. And what are you going to do when that attack happens? As, as the stand has raised his voice, slammed the cup down on the table, I just turn around and look at the guy who was in the car with us. <laughs> just turns and stares at him. Like, yeah, uh, that, that he, was enough attention. He's 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 absolutely watching you guys. Yeah. Um, and as you as you watch him, you notice that he picks up his pencil, makes another note, and then puts the pencil back down. I'm actually going to get up and go walk over to him. I don't go to me in a second. Let them finish their combo. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand on Cass's hand for a second, like as in don't just just chill out. Then I'm going to get up and go walk and talk to the guy after these guys are done with their immediate conversations. Uh, I was going to invite him over. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go, I'm going to go chat. I'm going to go chat with him for a second. But, I was about. Uh, you seem very but, interested in us. But you say just said to Destan, what are you going to do? I want to get the answer to that. What are you going to do when when that does happen? I was about to suggest before you get up because I was. I was sure. sure. That much I do have detect forts, so I was wondering if he's within 30 feet of me, of me, if I, you know, I'm getting my energy back now from hydrating and whatnot, and I was wondering, yeah, if I could, if that was possible, if Ada is able to pick up on any sort of basic things that this man is thinking about or taking note of. 
Absolutely. Uh, you can go ahead and cast Detect Thoughts if you like. So it's a Wisdom saving throw, a 13, so the guy has to... Okay. I'm going to pass that. And do you know if he succeeded or not? Oh, I guess you would, because you'd either be able to yeah, detect like access, but I think if he Never fails, <laughs> I get insight uh, into his emotional state and things like that. Okay. Uh, you absolutely succeed with the spell. He failed. Um, cool, thank you. Give it a quick a minute. Look it over. Okay, so uh, he is very excited. Um, so you you do feel that that feeling of excitement, mm -hmm. um, and he's like, you can hear it, you know in his mind. These ones are going to be very interesting. Uh, I've got to put them in my story. Um, I wonder which one I should interview first. I think, I think I want to talk to. Well, I want to talk to the church soldier, but he scares the shit out of me. So maybe I'll start small. Maybe I'll start with the goblin. Hey. <laughs> start oh God, small. He's writing the fan fiction about us. Yeah, so I whispered to everyone what you've just said. I was like, I think he might be writing a book. I don't think he's a threat. I'm not sure. I, I, he wants I, to I, talk to Josiah first, I think. So maybe we should go over there. I you say what he called me a church soldier and I go to I go to stand up like I am an arbiter. <laughs> Your ass down. I'm an arbiter. Of like that, that probably just touched his knee. Like I know. This is this is where she'll. This is where I will say. Let, let me go speak to him real quickly. I think we can make a perfectly acceptable conclusion to this interaction. Please continue your conversation. And that's when she'll get up. Off, um, off, like in real life, I was genuinely gonna go up to him and pretend to be a writer and ask him for any tips. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I'm gonna. I, I plan to go over there and use the universal language of uh, field PD now. So we'll. Uh, I'll get there when I can. So. Okay. So, sorry. Can you remind us the question that you asked when you finished, Dave? Which one? It was. You're talking about the one that Jane asked Dave, right? Oh, uh, what's, what's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. That was it. Yeah. When they do it, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah, it was, it was uh, just say this question to the spell and yeah, of what are you going to do when they attack? Are you with us or will you be against us at that point? Because they will try to kill her again. I will what make sure they that they the won't. Traitors? I will make sure that they won't harm you without proper interrogation. Mm. Are they going to know you betrayed them? It was my mentor and I didn't kill him, so yes. Yeah, Maybe so not. are they not just going to kill you? Maybe they'll be after you. Mis misunderstanding. Maybe he's working alone. No. It's not how I know the church. It is how I know the church. Pretty sure it's not how Giuseppe knows the church. I know the church pretty intimately. You can check my id uh while all that may be true just on you know uh your mentor is a clay store and they absolutely work independently uh and have ultimate authority when they choose to exercise it so while they may be while the rest of them may be used to the actions of the church at large the clay stores are a law into themselves so when Daston says he is the law really it's his, it's his mentor yeah, his mentor is the law. I mean, he's training to be the law, and eventually, you know. <laughs> yeah, and Destan, Destan knows, uh, just to listen to Destan knows that there have been times historically where a, a Quaestor trio, Triad, is that what we're calling them? I don't remember. Just the, the Quaestor uh, trio would uh, declare a different Quaestor trio uh, heretical. Yeah, heretical, and just go after them and assassinate them and go back to the church later and say, here's what they did wrong, and we had to kill them in the church. Like, okay, I guess. Like, so, <laughs> so the Quaestors definitely operate on their own level. Why do you think your mentor tried to kill Ada? I don't know. I don't know what the decision was. The kill order came through. He... You said the kill order came through, so he gave the kill order to you, or somebody gave it to him? I would assume someone give it to him, but he can work on his own authority. 
But it dis I disagree. It, it goes against the law of the church. His actions. So goes against are the law we of the saying church. this is because the gods are missing? Yeah, the gods yeah. vanished. There are no other gods. Church. I mean, we we've been over this as we've been over this at the beginning. There are no other gods. There is there the one church. Well, humor me. I'm a cleric of the one church. Not in the way that you are. But it seems to me I've still got my spells. I've got my powers. So it makes me think maybe the gods ain't hiding from us. They're hiding from the church. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Going to be some fun times finding out. Maybe. But if my men mentor is chasing us, then we are... We are all in a lot of trouble. We will not survive this. It's fine. We got a mechanical badger. He is fucked. <laughs> Hmm. He hasn't come across Bibi yet. Do you recognize agents of the church if you saw them? Only if they are an arbiter. The church employs many spies across the towns, across the continent, across the world. So our first concern would be if there are Others on the train. Wish yeah, to spies on the train. Ada bristles as she hears this because she's still on high alert. And now she thinks there's spies everywhere. There could well be. There are many forms of communication as well, which mm -hmm. is why I say they know we're here. They might not know our final destination, but they will attack before we reach it. How? You know them better than us. Are they tracking us? Yes. Well, fuck. <laughs> you, it can be assumed that they are tracking us. You take these? Yeah, yeah. I, po I point at the um, ID. Dastan, why don't you go ahead and make an intelligence religion check? Or Oh, first row is a natural 20 on the Nice. Uh, just say it's as well. <laughs> what was that? Just say if you can make that as well. Okay. And you said religion? Yes, yep. if you have it. Or you can make it even if you don't have it, but then you don't get the proficiency. Yeah, yeah so... Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Unnatural 20. I'm hearing that phrase, dirty 20, a lot more. <laughs> we, we've been like saying it for years. Uh, <laughs> our, uh, one, of our players, one of our players, Amanda, made it up. Without outside interference, I mean it's not like it's like the super crazy, but it's just funny. I'm hearing it independently from different sources a lot. Of the so, um, so both of you got successes on the uh, check. So what you do know about the ID bracelets? They're not tracking devices. They can't be tracked in and of themselves. But your IDs would have been logged when you purchased the tickets, and if you were not using, you know, if you were not using uh, fakes. If you're not, uh, then they would know if they know who you are, if they know your ID, then they could just look at the at the log books and find out where you were headed. So Destan didn't purchase a ticket, though. Destan did just, not purchase a ticket. No, he just hopped on. Right. He bullied his way on using his uh, church affiliation, which they didn't make a fuss. So it's not something that it apparently is something that has happened before. I'll clarify my question. I, I accept you believe they are following us. 
how are they going to attack? We're on a train. How are they going to follow us to start with if they're not already here? If it was me and I was tasked with the mission to infiltrate a moving target, specifically the railroad, the speeds at which we travel, I would attack by air. That's fair. Air or magic. They both work. Yeah, and I was going to say, so, and you know, probably, uh, Distan knows without even making any sort of check, stop me where I'm wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. That the One Church has access to balloon boats, which is air, as well as teleportation magic because of high level spellcasters amongst the organization. So, yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are both options. It's over, guys. They have the high ground. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if, if it's all up in the air <laughs> but you guys have the moral high ground so you know that's yeah. true if they if uh, if they really want ada then they would do both how important is ada he wasn't aiming at all of you you can only attack one target at a time and he singled out ada Clearly, oh, she's important. Go after single people. I don't yeah. know why I'm important. I I just know they're after me, and I just want to get away as far away from all of this as possible. They want well, me for something. They want me for my powers, but it's not fair. Can you explain your powers? It's just something I don't truly understand. I'm a traveler of sorts. I can go between dominions and um when the gods vanish the one church believes this is a way to get to them is through these dominions and i think they want to use me and my powers or maybe just harness my powers a way of getting to them by themselves that would be handy but i can't control sometimes if and how i get into these dominions I know sometimes when I'm stressed or when I'm hungry or exhausted, I can start, I can feel myself getting pulled into them. I have no control over it. I kind of lean in a bit closer. Do you want to hear a secret? What? Oh, my lineage is failing. Oh. You can't really tell. It's not allowed here. But whenever my emotions get the best of me, my eyes start to glow. But you learn to control them and to hide them. You will too. Can you help me control it? Is there anything you can teach me? A lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the first time, Daston actually, like. <laughs> actually, actually, I, I kind of. Smart on that one. <laughs> I, I kind of push the drink towards him. I'm going to break that emotional shell of yours. You're going to be friends. I just, I just pushed the, the alcohol away and just refill my glass of water. So while that conversation is happening, Izo was approaching the... Yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to walk up to the guy. What's he look like? Uh, he's kind of lean, uh, you know, in his, uh, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Uh, he has um, wavy dark hair, mid-length, brushed to one side. Uh, heavily gelled uh, glasses. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just, uh, oh yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll just walk over and um, say, I'll just slide uh, 20 gold. 20 gold? 20 gold on okay. the table and, and push it over and say, that's to pay for the rest of your drinks and whatever else you'd like. Uh, my only request to you was that as you write this book later, why don't we use pseudonyms, even if you overhear our correct names, and why don't you put this work out, say, a year from now or so? I'm sure you won't be done with it anytime sooner anyway. Go ahead and make it. So that is, see, look at I have expertise on intimidation, but I use persuasion because it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. That's a, a might be a regret. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. 
He looks at the money and then looks at you. And I don't think that this can wait. You don't understand. Uh, I am doing an investigative piece on the entire railroad project itself. And the kinds of people that would want to flee the hegemony society. I, this, is, this is groundbreaking. Uh, my name is Arsam Barshwar. Um, I work for the newspaper Out of the Shadows. Perhaps you've heard of my work. Maybe you're a fan. But I mean, I could win awards for this piece. There's no way I could let my competitors get the jump on it by uh, holding off release. Yeah, I have heard of your works, and I think you're very important. And so it would be unfortunate if you were to disappear suddenly before you got to the destination. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Now I get to make my Now you get to make your intimidation <laughs> check. <laughs> All right. So that is a 23 instead. All right. He kind of gulps at that and the, the, the uh, direction the conversation is taking. Before he even responds, I'll just say, so again, all I'm saying is, Thank you for your time and your hard work. This is for your drinks and your trip. Pseudonyms, pseudonyms, pseudonyms. It's like pseudonyms I can respect, uh, especially if you're a source. Would you care to be a source? Yes, my name is Destan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll say, I'll, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll say, yes, I can actually visit you at some point during this trip and give you even more information as long as it's all with students. I can I, I can keep my sources confidential. Perfect. And 20 gold is a lot of money. Too. 20 gold is a lot of money. So I'll say, I'll say perfect. Then I but, look forward to seeing you later. I mean, I'll just walk back to the group. All right. Slick. Yeah. That was slick. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a good point for a break, huh, Dave? Yeah, we can take a break there. That's fine. Perfect. Okay, so uh, everybody, we're just going to take five. We're going to grab some drinks, grab some snacks, pop to the loo. And when we come back, we're going to do a quick 10 minute Q&A uh, with Darius and Anthony about uh, SideQuest Press, about themselves, backgrounds, and of course, Lost Light. So if you have any questions, do stick it into the live chat and our moderators will pass it on to all of us. All right, we'll see you in about five minutes. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. See you soon. Cool. <laughs>
Hello, we are we are back. We should all be in the same seats. We are. Um, I'm just checking. We're, we're going to do. Um, we just come back from a quick break. I've got a biscuit. I got got some coke. Um, so we are joined um, by uh, SideQuest Press, who are made up of Darius and Izo. I was going to say Darius and Izo. Darius and Anthony. <laughs> 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 that means I'm playing my character. Yeah. <laughs> Um, who make up SideQuest Press and they have put together a campaign world called Lost Lights it's going to be launching on Kickstarter very 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 soon uh, uh, later this month so if you have any questions please do let us know in live chat just as Undead Corpse has done in live chat now put the capital word question and then your question that's just so we can we can see it but guys can you just kind of explain uh, where did you come up with um, why did you want to create this world what it means to you um, why SideQuest Press? Why Lost Lights? Go. Okay, I'll start because I, I, I've uh, kind of got some stuff ready for it. So basically, we, we uh, a few years ago, we decided that we wanted to start, we wanted to create a creative outlet for ourselves. Something we, we would always, we've been playing uh, at home games for uh, more than a decade with each other and a lot more beyond that back in the day. So we, we wanted to uh, get some stuff written and possibly published just to have said, hey, we've done something. We put stuff on the paper and we have some fun with it. So we initially decided that we need to create a shared world to write novels. In. Yeah. And and so then we started right, we started putting doing word building. And as, as, as a lot of people write, um, and, and I'm sorry, my memory is not perfect. I know I know Ada uh, Lauren uh, writes, right? And I, and I don't remember if anybody else writes uh, narrative prose as well. But world building is a problem for people because either they're not, they don't like doing it or great at it, or they overdo it. Usually, those are the two things that exist. Usually, and we're the latter, and so we're, we started doing a lot of world building, and and we realized, shit, this is too much to just write novels on. We want to we want to put the bits and pieces in out too. And we realized that a good way to start it would actually be to do something we already love, which is tabletop gaming, and create a setting based on it. Now, we do eventually still have plans to write narrative pieces on the setting, but this is, this part is taken over, right? So. Early on, we decided we wanted to do something. We, I want to preface by saying we do absolutely love all the classics, uh, most of the classics, I guess I should say. Some of us like certain ones more than others, but you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Raymond Feist. Uh, I love Tad Williams, which I'm still trying to get him to read at some point. Stephen Erickson, Malice and Book of the Fallen. A lot of really good stuff that is also really European. And that's fine and great, but there's a lot not explored in other mythologies that we wanted to touch on a little bit more. So we thought it'd be really cool to have a setting that's based on our backgrounds. Now we're both American. We're not going to try to pretend that we're, uh, you know, first generation from wherever else. But we have rich backgrounds uh, in, for for my family, uh, Mexican, Mesoamerican, lore, mythology, religion, etc. And then for his family, uh, Persian, Persian. So we went, we branched out further for just going back further Mesopotamia. And a lot of it was also, uh, you know, uh, my my dad is first generation immigrant from Iran to America. And growing up, I grew up very American. And I, while I was around his culture and he brought it out, I didn't appreciate it when I was younger. And um, if I get a little political, uh, when 9-11 hit, I got a lot of backlash for, for that side of me that I hadn't really thought about. And it caused me to want to explore that, that part of me instead of trying to hide it. Uh, you know, my dad said something that was kind of just mind breaking to me at the time where, you know, my middle name is Chris and he told me he gave me the name Chris so that if things ever got rough here for Iranians, for Middle Easterners, that I could go by Chris instead of Darvish. And that sort of like shocked me and at the same time made me lean harder into my Iranian heritage because uh, I get angry when I feel like I'm getting bullied. Um, so that's when I started to really want to explore my heritage more. And that's when, you know, that sort of, I got a really good opportunity to explore it and to write about it when we got to make this set. So, so we thought, you know, and I think as a lot of people age, they start to um, maybe attempt to become more reconnected with parts of their culture as a child, but they didn't really care too much about it. Because you're a child, you're having fun, as you're a young adult, you're living, and then you start to get into stuff later. So anyway, Aside from getting into that ourselves, we thought this is a space in fantasy and in tabletop RPGs that isn't explored a lot. Uh, I did see someone in the chat mention at some point, so it's like Mastika, I think it was called, the old Forgotten Realms uh, thing where they did this. Mm -hmm. And 
sort of. And I have some things to say about that uh, attempt uh, that, that, that uh, I think it was still TSR at the time that did Mastica, or was that Wizards already? But I think it was. I think it was TSR. Yeah, I think it was TSR. Nevertheless, they gave it a shot, and I think they, they succeeded and failed at certain points. But nevertheless, we decided to throw this together, and we thought that there were some things to explore. Speaking of race, uh, something that is highly politically charged, but don't worry, we're not going to get too deep into that. The idea of there are a lot of gamers nowadays that don't especially enjoy the idea of race being a denotation for your character at all because of complex issues like we're one human race and because of some stereotypes that go into these things. So one of the things we wanted to do early on too is break down that idea. And we did that with lineages that given are more, more prevalent on the main war continent, the high fantasy one, not the one that we're playing on for district, but uh, the idea of breaking things down to where you can be a, a dowdy elf or a, or an agile, um, highly intelligent dwarf wizard, or, you know, lots of different options like that. So you can mix and match and make whatever you want based on the combination of ancestry and religion. So then we got into the depths of the world building, right? You need backgrounds, you need histories. So we have a history going back um, a couple hundred thousand years, I think, written out. And we've got, I, I think it's something like 800 or 900 pages of world building we've done so far. Um, so I guess that's where we are, right? We, we, we kind of talked about what the two continents were right at the beginning of the stream. We can do that again if you like, or we can just get into. So questions. how long did it take you guys? There was a question, how long did it take you guys to write all of this so far? <laughs> two and a half. We've, we've been working for two and a half to three years on this. We, it was it was a conceptual idea for several months that we tossed back and forth, but we've been grinding it out, writing day in, day out, to about two and a half years. Just the two of us. Uh, we've, we've brought some more people in to help us take this, you know, this, the next step. But as far as the actual writing goes, it's just been a two of us for about two and a half years. And I didn't hear if it was answered. Did either of you have a favorite Mayan god? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was reminding myself. So like for me, um, so and that's a complex, I'll just say this. There's, there's Ultapec, there's Mayan, there's Aztec. There are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people say that, um, What's the 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 Egyptian pyramids are closer to you know what, what's I'm trying to say as I talk about chronology and how we compress things as we go basically, but uh, I don't remember what the the the, the common go to is for that. But what we do is as the further back we go, the more we compress things, right? So Mayan, Altepec Mayan, Aztec, these are all things that overlap in our minds a lot if we're not really familiar with the history. And so I'll answer that by saying this: I have a favorite Aztec. With this, which is Chalak, he who makes things sprout. Uh, it's the god of growth and, and, and renewal. Um, Mayan gods, I'm not as familiar with, but we did do a lot of research on a lot of these things to fill some holes into it. Also, Mesopotamian lore is rich and really far back, so we had to do a lot of research. <laughs> well, we, we the, had, I was going to say, we had a question from uh, Rick M, the GM, who's, who's basically said, uh, Is Lost Lights set in a steampunk style Mesoamerican setting? Or can it be more pre-Steam? Oh, so that's so it's, yeah. it. So Lost Lights as a campaign setting only in a Dodge Our Way is in the, the steampunk style category. Yeah. Um, Main War is, is much further behind te uh, technologically, although much more advanced in, in arcane matches. Uh, however, we've really blended a lot of the the technology, you know, it, it's not strictly steampunk. We have stuff that is much more modern than steampunk and then other aspects that actually fall behind them. Yeah, that's great. Let me let me tie that, jump in there and tie that into uh, an answer to an earlier question I wanted to extract a little bit on. Um, Mastica, the, the old uh, pseudo setting that was within Forgotten Realms that was really strictly based off of specifically Azteca and Mayan lore, um, it was fun. What it was was, and this is a, a, an issue I think with, with a lot of fantasy in general, is the idea of this direct analogous transposition of, of real world cultures. So you might read a book and you read it and you go, okay, this is basically France, you know, and that's okay. That's fine if that's the way people want to write. We specifically wanted to do something different. So Nadajar Way is such a clean mix of Mesopotamian and Mesoamerican lore and myth, as well as other stuff we've thrown in, that it's tough to really put it as steampunk within the Industrial Revolution type era. So we went a different direction. It's gas punk versus steam. That's a little tiny niggling difference, but it's a different type of technology. And most importantly, we mixed in, I'm uh, sorry, I, 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 I said so many words, I lost my train of thought. What I meant to get to was the idea of 
it's not directly analogous historically either. So in real life, you have Renaissance, you have Industrial Revolution, you have these epochs that follow one another. In this, we tried to act like things were invented as needed because necessity breeds invention, right? And that uh, they don't necessarily link to the next invention in the same exact manner that we do in real life because it's a different history, it's a different world. It's not directly analogous to the real world. So on the Dodge right way, you have uh, technologies from various, you have automatons, right? And then you have balloon boats, but no propeller driven craft, um, no no real- um, No airships. Yeah, we class there's, there's no gas combustion, not really like uh, petrol based gas combustion. Uh, there's Tesla-like elements. There's so you know what I mean. So we, we we went ahead and did certain things and not others. There's certainly technological elements like zippers that weren't invented until I want to say like the near 1900s. Right. And that's clearly way past some of the other technology that we have too. So what we did was we had just a different technological advancement tree. So it's tough to put it in one specific uh, area because it's its own thing. That's a long, pretentious way to say it you know, way to say we think it's cooler than just taking modern technology or, or hmm. what happened in your life. But well, I, I, I like the plan of having it on two separate continents because that way you've got, again, everything you're into, if your players want to explore and do different things, you have the high-end fantasy world and then you've got something a bit more te uh, and, technological uh, forward, but you can cross the streams at some point. Is there only one ocean between them? Exactly. Yeah, and, how yeah. You cross and we also, uh, we have two other settings on this world to find out if this uh, if this Kickstarter is successful and we can do what we want. When this Kickstarter is successful. When this Kickstarter is successful. When? Uh, we have a undersea campaign that is probably going to be the next book that we release that is going to delve deep into the ocean and what's beneath uh -huh. and uh, tie some things together. Uh, and it's going to be very merfolk centric. And then let me say the other one, because I know you're going to give away the, the, the <laughs> throw the baby out with the bathwater here. The other one is extrapolating on how the gin now, the gin is something we touched very lightly on in the Dodger Way setting for, you know, for obvious reasons due to its link to some of the history there. The way that the gin tie into the missing Fey on Mainwar, who have been missing, gone, disappeared for thousands of years. And that's where I'm going to stop. Because I know you love to, I, I love, he loves to talk, he, he wants to talk and create a process over and he gives away stuff that we're like, no, we're going to fit the right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so potentially Casalan could be reunited with his family. It's, yeah, absolutely. And especially because these characters, as we talked to you guys ahead of time, we'd love to utilize these characters in the future. So, you know, as long as you don't die, there's long term characters. So. <laughs> if I shut up, I might. <laughs> <laughs> never but, happen. It'll yeah. never happen. Can I ask a question if we've got time? Yeah, last question because obviously right. we want, we're now into the last hour sure. of the game. All right. It's quite personal. Uh, what does it mean to you to be able to create something that has this representation you wanted to see when you were younger? I can talk about this for sure. This was a big deal for me the whole time. And, and I'm not going to, you know, wax too poetic here. But basically, uh, I'm really excited about what Marvel is doing. Um, uh, it, it was always really cool for me to see representation as a kid. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's easy for us to, you know, make grandiose statements about this stuff. But I'll just say this as a child seeing, um, and as a young adult, seeing, seeing uh, Mexican and Mexican-American heroes on whatever television they are. In Star Wars, Cassian uh, is a favorite character of mine. Um, uh, just seeing that's really cool for people who don't otherwise see it a lot. So it's really cool for us to be able to write this too, because again, at the end of the day, if someone wants to play Forgotten Realms, which I love, and Dragonlance, which I really love, I have a piece of Dragonlance art behind me from campaign we did. Um, those are great and and those are there but we wanted this to be there as well so we wanted it to be there for someone who sees it and goes that that's cool that represents me or, or even if it doesn't that's something i'd love to play since i haven't had the possibility to represent that in my game so it's really important for me it was really important for me to so the dodger way was kind of more my a little more my baby than main one mm -hmm. we split those continents in our writing mostly although we did cross over so that, that's a big deal for me so uh, right, thanks so yeah it's, it's a nice opening to like oh this is how interesting this culture i need to learn yeah. more about it yeah these are these are extremely deep, deep rich and ancient cultures that just aren't delved into too much so it's really nice. yeah finding a reference for the art i i was looking at stuff i'd never seen before and it was right. really interesting yeah and then right before we go live, I just want to answer, uh, if I may, Rick, Rick the Champ's question, uh, just by saying Luis Loza is actually my favorite designer. I follow him on Twitter and interact with him a little bit. And so he's doing he's doing the same work that we're doing for Paizo Ascension. So I really like what he does. Very, very familiar. Okay. Cool. Darius, back to you. 
Back to the we're, game. Go, we're gonna go right into the game. All right. Um, so we are picking up our our uh, wayward our wayward adventurers have uh, fleeing a church attack. They boarded a train heading east along the Great Railway, uh, very far east, all the way down. Oh, well, actually, they're going south first um, to uh, Shizax in Hemetu. And from there, which is the last great city uh, before the railway heads east to the unexplored wilds. Um, and they are going to follow that railway and maybe even follow it all the way to its, to its conclusion. We don't know yet. Um, or, yeah. <laughs> or we'll die along the way. Or we'll right. die along the right. way. Right. As right. Well, Sean has been uh, very uh, emphatic that they will be doing so. Yeah, don't forget that no matter how much you love someone, you spend a lot of time in a cooked up space with them, you might murder each other. Okay. We're not even good friends. With them, so. <laughs> I did say it could become a, you know, murder mystery uh, train with all the train guns on board. So uh, we've been, you, you guys were in the common area, in the dining cart of the of the train, which was slowly making its way out of Hayage and south towards Shizats, uh, with a few stops along the way. You were enjoying some water, some fermented pomegranate juice, uh, and uh, talking a little bit between threats. I guess maybe you've gotten all the threats out of the way. The dining cart is mostly empty except for your group and a lone journalist as you've come out to find as uh Izo confronted the journalist um both bribing and threatening him and for the most part seems to have gotten her way <clears throat> as Izo makes her way back to the seat more travelers make their way through the cart um three in particular uh You see a another Gabarese is probably where your eyes are first trumped. A very large female Gabarese, a statuesque beauty. Um, she has a she's wearing asymmetrical clothing, clothing that uh, the colors and the designs don't repeat themselves throughout the pattern. Um, she has. Uh, a third of her hair shaved while the rest is, is pulled back in a ponytail. Uh, and then the other side is left uh, is left full of hair. These are the markings of people that have either settled in or come from Fawesh, which is a nation far to the, to the west and the south. Uh, I think nearly as far south as the... There are only two nations. Yeah, yeah only, only two nations uh, more southern than uh, Fawesh. And the Fawesh they celebrate asymmetry. They, uh, they sort of even those even those that uh, that have symmetrical faces will mar their features as much as they can to uh, be asymmetrical. And she does not even need to do that because her left leg is actually uh, missing, and she has a steel prosthetic leg that she was walking on uh, as she moves along. Um, she is carrying. A, uh, a very sickly looking man, uh, middle-aged. Um, his skin is a, a, of a yellow pallor and he's coughing into a handkerchief as she carries him along. And at her side is a, uh, another woman. Sorry, not another woman, uh, another man uh, with fair skin and dark hair, which marks them as a native of the uh, Cork Archipelago, a, a, a island chain, even that is south of Nadajar Way, and um, not actually part of the hegemony. In fact, they are at war with the hegemony, so it's very odd to see someone uh, of, the, of that, uh, those people here in Hayaje, the, the seat of the hegemony. So the three of them are making their way through the cart, and they just kind of pause to take in the, the large group that you guys are. And the man that's being carried, you didn't give us any info on, and that's okay. On it, maybe you can't tell where he might be from. The other two are more distinctive. Yeah, he's he's wearing like bed clothes, so he he, he doesn't have a style of dress that really okay. marks him. And no no um, asymmetry, forced asymmetry. Yeah. Gotcha.
Okay. So we're at the table and they simply walk by. Yeah. They, they, well, they're they're at the table. You guys are at the table and they're walking by and then they just stop and uh, the Gavarese looks over and just studies the group and then sort of turns and, and moves to continue their work. I think Steve was about six or six. Yes. Yeah. You're a you're a healer, correct? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Perhaps um, as an icebreaker, we um, we go and see what's wrong with the man being carried. I can I can speak to the Gabarees, make a no way we of introducing ourselves, find out what they're about. That sounds like a great idea. Would it would it be un, unusual to see people from so far south? You know, from Fawedge, for example, a Gabarees from Fawedge, prevalent in in the capital. Uh, it's. I mean, it's a long way to travel, but travel between nations does happen. It's 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 uncommon, but not unheard of. Okay, but it would be, it would be very uncommon for somebody whose nation is at war with no. Yeah, the the now that is he's the one that's really out. Notably, the court in the archipelago archipelago I'll never get that word right is outside of the hegemony entirely. Right, the hegemony is eight nations. To the south of them, across the strait, is the archipelago. Okay. So, yeah, and it is it is a uh, it is a disorganized country that is more pirate than actual country. I um I turn to Ezo and I just throw out the two buffs. She'll just shrug and uh, take another drink. That's her way of saying, "Don't necessarily support it, but shoot yourself in the foot, go for it." <laughs> As Anarchy left, I am um, cast message, so you can tell me secretly. What's going on? So, how would you like to play it, Steve? Do you want to go over first? Or we go together. We go together. Mm -hmm. um, I'll introduce myself and introduce you. I, I stride over. Um, I will leave my weapon on the table. I don't want to appear threatening or intimidating. Okay. Good evening. I couldn't help but notice your friend appears to be unwell. Um, uh, my associate here is a is a healer. If you would allow him to um, diagnose, maybe. My husband, not my friend, but certainly we have not found a healer that we can afford who has been able to treat him successfully. But we live in hope. And no harm in a second opinion. She um, sort of looks, you know, uh, looks around and then finds, you know, a, a, one of the a nearby table that is, hasn't been taken up and sort of gently sets him down on the table. Uh, my name is Rika. This is my husband, Taraz, and my husband, Tuck, and gestures to uh, the core case as well. My name is Anenki. Castellan. I, uh, I hail from Hamatu to the east. I see by your styling you're from the south. From Fawaj, if unless I'm mistaken. Yes, we are from Fawaj. The the doctors have been unable to treat Taraz. Uh, have, have been unable to treat Tuck. Uh, but they feel that a change of climate might do them good. The dry heat instead of the the dampness of our nation. So you uh, you seek to travel east too into the desert. Yes, we are. Not necessarily it was wasn't necessarily our first choice, but if it can help his health, then we're willing to, I suppose, settle a new area. I kind of gesture forward, may I? Please. She steps back, noticing your your markings, your holy symbol of the, the one church. If there's anything I you can do. Sit uh, across from him and uh, how, you, how you feel, my friend? He coughs for a moment, uh, you know, and as he pulls the, the handkerchief away from his mouth, you see a bit of red on the on the handkerchief. Looks like he's spitting up blood. Uh, I've been better. <laughs> And I make a medicine check to see if I would know anything about this. All right, go ahead and make that roll. Uh, 
12. You haven't come across it personally, but you have read about cases. It seems like he's suffering from tuberculosis. Oh, TB. So, would I know of anything that would probably ease the pain or lessen the symptoms? I mean, he's been, he's been, I mean, he, he looks like he's pretty far along, so there may not be any, any non-magical cure for it. And certainly, you know, heading to the dry heat should help. They're not wrong with that. But unfortunately, I personally don't know too much about how to treat tuberculosis, but uh, uh, as a healer, you can probably mix together some, uh, some medicine that would at the very least, alleviate his discomfort, if not actually cure it. I haven't put anything like that in my infantry. I didn't think to. Oh. Is that something I could just add, say, oh, yeah, I did that, or are we not playing it out? Uh, as a cleric, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. fair with you. as a as Especially a, with the resources of the organization. Right. There's, there's no reason why you couldn't have that, even if you missed it on your A combination of antibacterial medications for a period of six to 12 months. So you're going to decide on the spot, man, if the hegemony has antibacterial medication capability or not. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm just going to lean to saying, uh, so, sorry, going through this. There ain't a lot I can do, but I can use that paint a little bit. Is that right, Ryu? Yeah. I, um, and, I, I tried. You, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, real quick. You said his name is Talk. Yes. The guy who's injured? Please don't tell me his last name is Holiday. No. Okay, good. All right, good. It's, it's Tommy. All right, got it. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you guys have all seen. Uh, Tombstone, one of the best movies of all time. Hmm. But if you haven't, put it on your list. And Val Kilmer's best performance is Doc Holliday, but that's why I thought like, he had to work, that's why I'm wondering. That's, that, that, that was not, it. that was not the inspiration. Well, here's the thing, that was not the inspiration, but. You might have to now. Maybe now it will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's now kind of. I'm not, I'm not saying that it wasn't in my subconscious. Gotcha, that I wasn't gotcha. aware. All right, sorry, go ahead. I had, I had so, um, I, I stand up and I, I say to his wife that, I, I, I'm gonna, I'll make some, I'll crack someone up for, try helping the pain. Um, will I need to go anywhere for that or how long does it easily take? Uh, I mean, you can, if you have your supplies with you, then you could probably, you know, 10 minutes. Yeah. I, uh, together. I go off to where we were hiding before and I try and make, well, I need to roll for it or. Um. You can, yeah, go ahead and, and you make a, uh, a healer's kit roll, a wisdom healer's kit. I haven't got that in right now, so I'll just do a d20. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Oh, this is going on. I asked um, Adam Key what's going on via message. They appear to be travelling east because um, the woman's husband is ill. Eighteen. Sorry, Eighteen, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, All right. Yeah, you uh, you mix together uh, in, some of, you mix together some of your medicines. Come up with a uh, a cough suppressant and a pain reliever that you hope should, you know, at the very least, make him more comfortable. I kind of just like place it down, wink at him. Like, That's going to make you feel real good. But I bet it tastes terrible. I added a bit of, bit of something nice. Be fine. <laughs> he takes it down. Uh, coughs, you know, nearly coughs it up, but manages to suppress the coughs and then tell at least until he's finished swallowing. I, I nod and make my way back to the table. While uh, while he's talking to him, I would like to ask me a few questions. Okay. That's okay. So I just I'll chill lean over as she continues to sit her palm down and just say, so and, and you, your character is young, right? Yeah. Okay. So she'll say, young lady, do you uh, have no family to travel with you or go back to or 
No, I had to leave my family. I haven't seen them in months. Were they um, not trustworthy or was it simply for their safety? It was for their safety, really, as my powers became stronger. It was drawn a lot of attention. And when the one church kind of heard about what I could do, um, it just got too dangerous. So I decided to leave and rather put them in danger. And at no point did a one church agent tell you specifically what they wanted to do with your powers and that they wanted access to it? I don't know, like, <laughs> people would visit where I live and I knew they were interested in what I could do, but I just wasn't sure. I mean, I've heard stories about the one church and I just didn't trust what their intentions were for me. And I did my family really. And it was just easier if I just left. The reason I ask is because, you know, you could have joined the one church, gone to Hayashi and studied amongst the clergy, been given great power and prestige, and you could have passed back to your family. I could, but we don't really, we don't believe in the one church really. We have our sort of own sort of lighthouse as it were, but we don't believe in the sort of the, the general sort of infrastructure of the church as a whole. Preaching of the choir here, I'm, I'm one of those who says, let the gods, let the gods disappear and go and do their own thing. Humanity will take care of itself. No offense, and she looks over to uh, just say, others will take care of themselves too, but you get that. Yeah, we find the one church is very constricting. We prefer to be freer. I say certainly to Stan finds the one church's armor to be very constricting. <laughs> Seems to be fine. She'll look over and wake it. <laughs> again, I put the helmet on the table. Boom. It is not constricted. You may change your tune. We shall see. Or not. Maybe maybe there's maybe there's cooling technology in the armor that I know that that exists. Um, or maybe you're just so stolid and doubting that you just don't need it. I, I, I have worn this armor every day as part of my service. It does not have cooling technology. <laughs> that is most unfortunate for you, for where we're going. And maybe the weight, of, the weight of the armor, maybe that's part of the, the penance that we have to bear. Oh, I, have heard of, I have heard of lighthouses where self-flagellation and, and other self-penitent methods are in place, so... If that's what you answered, then well, that's, that's new, I guess. Yes, Did you say you're strong? That I'm what? Strong. Yes, I am strong enough. Think, uh, think you could beat my boy Aneki in an arm wrestle? Yes. I'm going to put money on this. I think he can. Who, who wants in? I'd like to watch it. Oh, I'm in. That'd be funny. I put a uh, 10 gold. It says that, uh, that it's a Stan high loses. Price. Mm. Gold is a bit. I'll put in the 10 gold. <laughs> Who's your bet on? Church boy. Okay, I love energy. having your money. Somebody's got to have his back. <laughs> so did Ben say they were going to do it? Are you guys? Uh... Well, I, I was still sitting with. Um... Oh, and, and uh, two husbands. <laughs> oh, so he's not even here to see that he's being. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm blissfully unaware of um, being pimped out by Cass. I'll, uh... <laughs> I guess you'll find out when you come back. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I kind of walk over to him saying, I'm so, so sorry to interrupt. Uh, we've got a very important meeting to be doing. I'm, I'm sure you understand. And I kind of like track, well, I say drag him, I can't drag him. <laughs> it's if he follows. Gently guide, perhaps? Yeah. 
okay. I, I allow myself to be pulled over. Um, I, I just wanted to question around uh, any contacts that they had in the east. Yeah, did they have somebody mm. that met them? Did I... they have the, 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 the correct paperwork? So they, uh, uh, Rika would have told you that, um, Rika would have told you that she doesn't, they don't know anyone, that they were just traveling out there blindly to try and save us a life as a trip they hadn't really planned to take. Uh, okay. Do, do I, do I think they might be, uh, being deceptive at all? Uh, make a intuition check. Uh, I believe that's a 16. Yeah, as far as you can tell, they're being completely honest. Okay. Okay. All right. I will. Um... Rika, if you if you need anything when you when we get to the eastern end, then yeah, you know, please let me know. It's uh. It's a bit of a wild place. The one church's influence there is uh, not particularly strong. My my grandmother was from this area. Uh, I've never been, but we have family out there. I've just never met them. They don't know we're coming, so <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Well, I, I, I wish you luck. I allow myself to be pulled over by, by Cass. <laughs> I gotta see this contested, what is it, contested strength roll? <laughs> contested strength roll, so <laughs> if if you guys are going to do this, it's going to be three strength, pure strength checks. Um, and whoever wins two out of the three will uh, be the victim. <laughs> So you sit down at the table, uh, sort of maybe clear some space as everybody moves back, and, and then he slowly lowers down, puts his enormous arm on the table, looking over it, just stunned. I uh, I step on the like a seat or something or a chair just to then start like chopping his shoulders like you you got this big man. <laughs> Insight check is sixteen. Uh to watch others and see if they're taking as special attention as they as they are listening. Okay. Uh, yeah, everybody's uh, watching at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we are a spectacle. What uh, what are the entertainers receiving? <laughs> oh Stan uh, and I are putting on the spectacle. Yeah. You gotta give them a cut of all okay. bets, basically. That's Bragging rights? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a share of my winnings if he wins. Basically, well, what you generally do here, throw the pool, and actually, she'll, she'll say this in case, sorry. So what we would generally do is create the pool of bets, and at the end, give them a good 25% of all the pool, and then divide the rest of the pool up amongst the winner. I mean, not that I've ever been involved in betting or anything like that. It just seems to be what people would do if they were. Mm. Hey, nice I, I cover. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like nobody is buying that one, I so. Uh, I, I, uh, I'll lead into SO. I say, you want me to get a bit of business going? Or should I? Yeah, you might as well sweeten them up. Do it. Um, it. <laughs> I kind of go around and just tell people about what's happening and just really like pitch, <laughs> like look at the yeah. size of these two. As we say, the pot thickens. Make a, uh, make, just make a, a flat, just charisma check. Charisma check. Uh, I'll say in two seconds. That is a 13. 13, yeah, you, you drum up noticeable interest from people. And there's been, uh, as this has been going on, more people have sort of you know, gotten their belongings in order and they're starting to fill up the cabin. So there's now there's about eight people in here beyond yourself. Oh God. And you start to collect some bets. They have a crowd. <laughs> and everybody's watching now as they uh, settle down to have an arm wrestling contest. Kind of step it up. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the main event? 
for, for the whole time, while all of this is going on, I'm just staring at an equi. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of place my when they get the hand together. I kind of play, hold them together. I want a fair game, guys. Ain't See, no biting. In, in no my cheating. mind, I, in my mind, I've just got the product of handshake. It's like <laughs> <laughs> he's just in his two massive arms, like get bigger. <laughs> right. Yeah. There ain't, there ain't no fighting. There ain't no cheating. Maybe a little kissing. I'll allow it. <laughs> I want a fair game. Do this. All right. I, I, I put my hand up and say, I don't wager, but I am curious. So with a sly smile on my face, my hand is ready. It's warming up to us. I, uh, I grasp his hand. Let's do this. Grass pans, muscles flex and bulge, and there are many grunts of exertion as you begin to push against each other. Let's see those I've grabbed, I've grabbed the side of the table. I've seen over the top. <laughs> I've grabbed the side of the table. Here we go. And it's a straightforward strength check, yeah? Yep, straightforward strength check. 13. I put on a show. But ultimately, I don't resist. Oh, so you're going to let him? Yes. Okay. I, I, feel, I feel like putting... I'll make a I'll make rail if you want. I'll make a deception so if, I, if I push his arm all the way down, I'm like, come on, you have to try. No, I'm trying. No, no, I'm no, trying. No, I'm, no, I'm no, going to make a deception so, roll to make it appear that yeah, I, am, so I am fighting. Why don't we get... But I, wanna, I want to allow him to win. Right. Why don't He's we get really throwing weird? it. And uh, let's make a strength deception check. That's great. That is exactly. So sorry. <laughs> I just want to say something. But D and D five E is really cool, and that you can do that sort of thing. It, it, it lays it out in the, in the game in the Dungeon Master Guide about the idea of adding. And, you know, Dave obviously knows this in the future. But like the idea of putting different abilities with different skills is a perfect example of when we do this stuff. Um. So uh, I'd like to use athletics in a way to to do that deception. Um, so my athletics check was was a 15. So I'm basically going to resist him enough, but just back it off, so that he's he's winning. If okay. I, if you can allow that, yeah. So my, my with my oh, yeah, yeah, ability uh, is a 15 on the roll. So I just want to I want to control the power. So okay. I, I feel how much resistance there is, and then I I ease it back. So it's it's th is it three rolls, and he has to win two of them. Is that correct? Correct. So you, you won that one. I, I get a look over my face as if I'm shocked. So you guys, you guys are going back and forth, just a little bit, back and forth, and then slowly, Destan seems to have the upper hand and pushes Anunji's hand down, and people are just shocked. But Lauren kind of, she knows Anunji. She, she can tell by his expression that he's not as upset as he would have been if he'd actually lost. She, there's, there's something up. She's, she's got a, a, she's got a very good eye, and, and she knows him. You know, the rest, everybody else, may, you know, they. Oh, Daston is worried. Uh, no, Daston. Cass is terrified right now. He's like, that's a lot of money. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and who did I bet on? <laughs> he's he's warming up. He's warming up. God, I hope he's hustling. I'm um, silently observing, but watching and thinking. Hmm. I'm thinking, what's going on? All right. Uh, ready for the second one? Okay. Second roll. <laughs> <laughs> Second one's a natural one. I've got four in total. Wow! Uh, so he's going well. He's trying not to. Uh, so, that's a uh, that's an that's an eleven. Um, and again, I do the same again. I feel the resistance, and I pack it off. I'm not sure you felt any resistance on that one. No. <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's me. Just just I'm just relaxing my arm. Oh, I'm now, almost pulling his arm. Now off. now I'm just squinting. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm, you're, not, so, you're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's a you. So the rest of them may be fooled, but you know that, like, the exertion you put up the first time, you felt something slip the second time, like your muscles weren't, they were exhausted from your first exertion. And there's just, there's no way you had that. Like, you can feel it because you felt, you felt your own arm give away and then he almost helped you down. So he wins. So he wins two, two in a row. Wins two in a row. Okay. But he knows. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Stan. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. It gives me more information to think about. Thank you, Aniki. You As they welcome. finish up, Lauren, mm -hmm. out of the, oh, sorry, Ada, out of the corner of your eye, um, you see something out of the window. Okay. A, a very strange sight. You see two just like you, you don't you don't see it at first because they're a little far back and you just kind of turn your head to to uh to look closer out the window and you see two soldiers knights almost maybe uh well not knights but uh mounted soldiers on automaton mounts large cylindrical balls like a gyrosphere rolling across the ground with a <clears throat> With a swivel cannon that seems that seems to be moving. I'm sorry, Back. what? <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. It seems to be moving slightly as they as the balls roll forward with the train. Uh, they're carrying in one hand. They're carrying uh, unicorn spiral lances uh, as they race closer and closer towards the train. Okay, I just stare at the window, the colour just drains my face, my expression, from being quite jovial after watching, you know, the um, arm wrestling, slightly inquisitive, because I knew Alan Key was up to something. I think, yeah, my expression just turns to absolute fear and terror. And I think the group pick up on that and they also see what I've just seen through the window. So none of the others saw what you saw, but you do see Beta start to a little bit. What is it? I think they found us. Let take a look at the window. I I press my face to the window. Yeah, right. Eyes. It's yeah. it's back behind the train. They haven't caught up, but they are moving faster than the train. Uh, so would my? I just want to make sure my uh, BB would mm -hmm. she have noticed this? Was it coming from behind? No, so she, uh, your automatons don't take independent action. They just follow set commands. So if you had set her to guard or, I you did. know, then I, she would, I, I, she'd yeah. guard your room if an intruder came in, but she wouldn't be uh, watching or, you know, acting as a scout. In other words, so, yeah, if you, you're going to have to go return to her and give her new commands if, uh, I have to go fetch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, are, are we all aware now that this is? Yeah. Yeah. I turn to Gi Giuseppe. Just say, uh, we'll uh, sell the bet later. So to stand. I guess we get to make a decision now. That's not a hypothetical question anymore. What are you going to do when the one church turns up? Does it look like they're well I'll wait for that chance to go? I will see if I can communicate with them first. Uh, does it look like they're gonna be catching up within seconds, minutes, twenty minutes? Uh, uh like not twenty, 20 uh you know, it probably three or four more minutes guys have before they okay, good. I really need him to say more than ten. <laughs> okay. Ritual spell. Hey, <laughs> It was a nice shot. It was a nice try. Do I have time to go fetch? Certainly. Excellent. I will. I'm. You think about what you want to do, just on. I'm gonna go get my BB. Uh, I, I'll walk out with you, but assuming we're in like cars, I mm -hmm. will go between the cars or like the outside door where I can stand. That's exactly what I was gonna open, say. Would it be best for us to go? Something. 
atop atop the car or something at the moment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, at the moment, if there's a connection between the cars, I'll stand there. If there's an okay. open door, like in one of the middle bits, I can open a door and wave out two of them. I've seen them. They will see my garb. And yeah, you can you can do that. Yeah. or something like that. Are you putting yeah, your helmet back that. on? The helmet goes back on. Yeah. <laughs> Before I think we're going to get in some trouble. I just uh, I'll do bless at first level, and I, I'll uh, put bless on Anna, Anarchy, and uh, so and the boss. So bless only lasts up to a minute. Oh, does it? You might oh, want to hold. Yeah, you might want to hold yeah. off and stop. I'll I'll keep that on hold then when uh, yeah. when when shit hits the fan. I will actually, say it ahead of time, you know, yeah, you can have it basically prepared so that it's yeah. you drop yeah. it before combat begins. Yeah, that's, if, that's if combat begins. Or yeah. it'll end us and talk us out of this, right? Yes. Um, I, uh, I I will say to Cass, I'll say, I'll say we best be prepared, and I'll point up to uh, uh, doors. I assume that this train has like a ports at the top on the ceiling. Yeah, there are each each car has actually uh, two hatches, one at the beginning, you know, one at each entrance. Hmm. With like a ladder on the side maybe or something, obviously, I guess. It's, yeah, it's it's like a uh, it's pulled it's a uh, collapsible. It's a like a vent, right? A collapsible ladder? Yeah, sure. a collapsible ladder that How do you it's down. in the floor then? Right. When the yeah. uh, no, when the hatch goes down, it extends the legs. So you can't get to it from the inside? That's what I'm saying. How do you open the hatch from the inside? There's no ladder up to it. That will, yeah, you, you have to be able to reach it. From the inside. Okay. And then, so that's about 10 feet up though, right? Or six there, feet? Yeah, about 10, 10 feet. Okay, so anyway, so I'll point to the, I'll point to the hatch and I'll see if in, in, we, we best be ready. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach up and undo the hatch. <laughs> I, uh, I actually forgot about that. I was thinking we were going to have to get on somebody's shoulder or something like that. So you just reach up and, pull and, and, and just and unclick it and the ladder comes down, right? Right, yeah. That's amazing. It's, you know, his head is almost brushing the ceiling as it is. Yeah, I forgot about that. Cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ada, she jumps behind, like, the food counter bit, just hides. Okay. You guys are definitely getting some looks because not everyone on the train has noticed. So, you know, this is a, a busy car. I'll say, well, that's a good point, thank you, I'll say. I suggest everyone go back to their stalls. Uh, it's going to get hectic in here very soon. You don't want to be hurt. Okay. I don't know if that's a persuasion or if you don't want to roll. Uh, do you want to be menacing or do you want to be no. persuasive? Yeah, just persuasive. Okay. So that's a 14, 17. Okay. Uh, most of the people do begin to filter out. They sort of like looking around, trying to figure out what's going on, uh, but they hardly make their way away from them. I assume the writer is staying there? Uh, the writer is definitely <laughs> staying there, and uh, there's another woman who's staying there as well. Well, I signal uh, to the writer, you may want to come and hide here for a bit. <laughs> Good idea. And he grabs his drink and his notebook and, like, joins you behind the bar. I will, I will. I just... Uh, <laughs> how do I want to do this? So, so, Joseph has already left the car, right? Yeah, just say if he's left. So the, uh, the, the door, I think, is Destan like holding the door open or does he just shut the door behind him as he's between the two trains? I, I will shut the door behind uh, between them because it's okay. apparently it's supposed to be safer that way. Uh, I will but, do this to, no, sorry. I was gonna say, if, is there the, the things that are coming towards us, is there any kind of insignia that I would recognize? Uh, well, yeah, they, the, uh, Soldiers are wearing church. Uh, okay, so they're definitely you know, one church, uh, potential right. officers or soldiers of, of some kind. And go ahead and make a uh, make a intelligence religion, religion check. Yeah, religion. Uh, Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. You recognize the lances. You haven't had a chance to work with one before. They are a highly experimental lance that isn't yet in production these are just prototypes uh some uh, some of the Mac church macazikis have recently invented them uh they're called lightning lances and they essentially have like they're, they're the battery at the half of the lance powers up and the entire uh lance acts as a uh, conduit for electricity unfortunately they haven't they haven't perfected the design, and the electricity sprays out haphazardly. Uh, there's no way to 
there's no way to keep casualties a minimum because it's an undirected blast of lightning that, yeah, this, this that arcs hurt, between this people. No, that's what I'm thinking. So, about, right, they're, whoever they are, why they're sent, they don't care about civilian casualties. Yeah, this is not a surgical tactical unit. This is taking out the train. Perhaps. I will, all. <laughs> before I forget about it, I will look at uh, Castle and I'll say this. Uh, well, I won't say anything. I will just go like this to my eyes and then point directly at the one woman that you think you were sneaky about and mentioned was the only other person who didn't make the train, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so I will I'll definitely I'll definitely look like this and point at her. And speaking, what does that mean? Uh, that means keep an eye on her and shoot her in the face if necessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is Pistan doing as they get near? Because you're going to be the first one to decide whether or not. I was, I was going to ask, my long rifle, would it have some kind of uh, sight on it? Like a, like, you know, a not powerful telescopic, telescopic sight? Those so are, that, isn't, that isn't a, look. I would say it probably has a basic sight. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, would, it would have a sight on it, and then if you pay for the upgrade, it does. There is a, a, a scope. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll detach that and actually have a look. So I can see that they they are arbiters of some kind or church soldiers. I want to have a closer look, and I put the eyepiece up and see whatever detail I can see. How many? Um, we got two riders. Is it just, is it one rider per object? Sure. Uh, make a uh, make a perception check. Okay. Perception. And you have advantage for your story. Okay, advantage for that. So let's do it again. I got 12 on the first roll. No, I got 12. 12 was my hope. 12. Okay. Um, yeah, they, um, they, uh, there's one rider uh, per spear, and it's it, like I said, it's a it's like a gyroscope almost yeah. with a saddle on it. I think it really has the last dragon, but metal. <laughs> I haven't actually seen that. That's, it's that's a, on my list. Like, it's yeah, ah, it's a great film. Yeah, it's a it's a terrible. Um, and then beneath the saddle is sort of like a, a cannon that that can be fired, but it doesn't look like they're intent on using it. But it's it's not trained on the on the uh, on, on the, the train. train? The it's they not are, trained on the train. It's not trained on the train. Um, English is funny. The lances aren't the lances that they carry aren't like you know they're not traditional like medieval knight lances. It's like it's like a it's basically like a giant unicorn's horn. Uh, you know, I, mean, I will, I'll, I'll stop looking through the for the scope. I'll reattach it and I will signal for parlay. Okay, so that's what you're doing as they approach, and they are getting closer. Uh, any of the rest of you taking other precautions? I'm doing. Oh. I'm just doing what I'm told and keeping an eye on that woman. Okay. I'd I'll like draw. to cast aid, I think, um, on three people that I think will benefit from it. So I'd like to cast it on Ananke, Castellan, and Josiah. I still don't trust to stand yet, so. Josiah is. Josiah isn't there. She went to go fetch her. Ah. Josiah and Destan both are yep. out of the car. Ah, okay. But so, thank you for thinking of me. Thank you. How about I wait till <laughs> back, then I'll do it. I'll hold my action. If I make it back, because I have to go back. through the star <laughs> to get back to you. <laughs> what does aid do again for us? Um, so it boosts your hit points by five. <sighs> uh, eight hours. Oh, I'll hold it till I see. That. Everyone yeah. back in the room. Um, I, I would I would like to climb the ladder. Okay. Um, and lay on the roof, please, and just keep okay. an eye on what's tailing us. Yeah. So you climb up the train, lay down on that roof. Uh, you pulling out a weapon or? Yeah, I'm, I'm holding my blunderbuss axe. Oh, so you got on the roof. Yeah. Okay. I will be by the ladder with uh, my two two double barrel pistol drawn. And I have a shield that I'll take out from, from my back, from like a small med act, small butt protect shield. It has a notch at the top, mm -hmm. specifically for holding like this and putting the pistol resting it. That's how the notch out yeah. The riders get closer and 
just on you know signals for parlay, but their response is to level their lances, and you see a spark at the bottom of the barrel as the electricity begins to uh, charge up, like down the spiral like that. And right, now I think this is the point where we roll for initiative. Okay. All of us. Everybody, yeah. yeah. Everybody, it'll, it'll get messy in a, in a second. <clears throat> I got 19 for Daston. 20 oh. to start. Do 19. I need to? Sorry, 20 for Izo. What did you say, Cass? 19. 19, and then 19 for Daston as well? Yes, please. I got 21. Ooh. Ooh, high rollers. 21. Oh, yeah. Uh, do I need to roll separately for BB? No, she'll go on your initiative. Okay. I got six. Oh. Oh. I'll clap high. It's fine. Broke the fine. street. That's fine. You're right again. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got nine. Nine for an entry. Okay. Oh. Nine for an entry. See, I get to look over and see what he rolls, guys. But I won't <laughs> Got a man on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to give us the spoilers that, of what's coming at us, you know. <laughs> That's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Joseph comes, you know, racing back down the car, uh, and she, you know, with her with her BB in tow and just throws open the, the car door to move back, and that's when we'll start combat. Uh, Ada, your spell will go off. You, you, know, you can cast the spell before combat begins. I'm, I'm fine with that. And Perfect. same for uh, Castellan, who is going to cast Bless, right? Yeah. So you guys will begin with those spells already active. Do, do I need to say who I'm blessing again? Or do, uh, um... Probably, if people don't know. Uh, Anarchy, Anna, and yeah, uh, Esso. It's only first level, so I can only do three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that lets us roll a d4 after the attack roll too. Yeah. Bless is a good spell. Bless us, everyone. Lauren, how many healing points did you say? Oh, hit points, so you get hit plus points. five. Plus five, that's it. So I'll choose three people and increase it by five. Dave, I know we're getting close to time. Do we want to try and get a round in, or should we just leave at this cliffhanger? Uh, I, think... I, I would say we do the combat, and then if we get to a cliffhanger point during the combat, that would be cool. Okay. Sounds good. Right, you know, the, they blow out the bridge that the train is headed towards. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you get, you get fried like a crisp by electrical current. So, yeah. yep. so we can call him Mr. Mr. Crispy? Yeah. <laughs> Sister Act 2 reference. All right. Uh, first round of combat begins. Um, as high as you are, somebody did beat you. Oh. The woman on the train that did not leave uh, gets up and races forward with surprising quickness towards Ada. Um, so she races behind the bar and she attempts to grab Ada. Um, with me watching her, was I ready to interfere or? Um, we, we can't really ready in action. So she's just faster than you and gets past you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ada reacts by punching her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to attempt to grapple you. <laughs> it's a pose strength plus athletics check. Okay. So is it it's athletics check? Yes, yeah, strength athletics. Okay. So there's no interest for you. Oh, strength, so. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got a four for strength and a 15 for athletics. So if you see your athletics on the uh, skills thing, if you just click on that. Uh, oh yeah, so I clicked, I've got 15. Okay, so with the roll to 15? Yeah. Okay, uh, not high enough. So she grabs, she grabs Ada and wrestles her and begins to drag her away. Uh, oh, really? Yep, all right. So do we have the do we have the train set up? It's all gonna happen. Okay. Something. So we'll, we'll get to actually see that tactically on the map in a second. Wow! If my mouse batteries were dying to the the train, that's cool. <laughs> Look, uh, literally, yeah, I see. Uh, 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 what a time click? for mouse batteries. Can you click? <laughs> there, there we go. All right. Um, moving on. It's uh, uh, just say turn. Ah, yes, so I come out to see what exactly. So you come out- At this out, point, uh, am I in the middle part with Deston? Exactly, you see Deston across from you. He's on the other side. You're on, on one side, you know, the, the platform between the trains. And you're on the, the other side with the car. She's on the other side there, so she's not on the map yet, basically. Uh, he's there, she's there. Uh, actually, he's in, yeah, that's exactly what I have. Okay. I'm no where, problem. What, where am I now? Where just, do I, uh, I will show it, you. It, yeah, in theater of the mind for just a second here. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to keep it in theater of the mind. Um, okay, fine. But yeah, yeah, you're you're in the upper part uh, on the train, and Destan is, is you know in front of you as you try to go down. She go behind the bar. Yeah, is that where you want her? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, and I see that the. Uh, Light lances lighting up. Yeah, and you see their. Uh... Oh, that's this one. Stop! Stop! Okay. They're uh, they're charging up with uh, crackling blue uh, electricity. How close are they together? They are about yeah, 20, 30 feet apart, and oh, okay. uh, they're about fifty feet away from you at the moment. Fifty feet. Oh, that's a bit of a distance. Well, I can try to fire at one of them, whichever one's closest. All right, go ahead and uh, so... take a shot. Oh, that's nice. Oh, what does that go under? All right, you got, that maps. Was... you got you got maps ready to go, even on air if you want to. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and start. Uh, well, what does that go under? Uh, your range attack with your gun? Yeah, it, where's my... Oh, the game log is covering up half my stuff. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's not the proper place to just stay at MBB because they're above the map. I just have it there. So, so I'm just going to roll my D20 and figure it out. Okay, what are you trying to do? She's cheating with her gun? Okay. So, where is the ranged? Which which weapon is it? It's the blunderbuss. Okay, so it's going to be one hundred three, I believe. But I, no, no, it's less than that. Yeah, that's not the that's not the less. Than that. Just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and roll. And I'll I think it's guess. I think it's going to be within the second range. I don't have it right here. It's uh, it's uh, uh not listed. Yeah, because it's it's a misfire spread type weapon. It's a cone. Oh right, it uses the sh so. So you can, so basically you can only fire within the 15 foot cone. But yeah, yours is the shotgun, that's what I thought. Oh, okay. Did you intend to have the shotgun? If not, we can switch to musket. No, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, well, there's nothing that I can really do because I don't have any long range stuff. Okay. You'll get closer. Yeah, you will get closer. I can hold, I mean, I can hold my action until they are within range. Yeah, there's no yeah, delay, so but there is ready. You can, you can ready, yeah, you can spend two actions to ready an action. No, um, that's Pathfinder. That's, that's Pathfinder. No, that's Pathfinder. But you wrong, can't, wrong it's system. Okay. You can't, you can't <laughs> simply state a ready with a trigger, though. That's what you can't do. So. Yeah, so I'm, I'm aiming it and I'll point it when at one of them. Like, when they're within come at, feet, just bam. Yeah. Come at okay. me. <laughs> You're not that guy, bro. 
All right, uh, so moving on to uh, Isa. So she sees the lady rush over and grab Ava, right? Right. Okay. So she's going to jump up onto the bar here. Uh, you probably want to check for that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's 19 on the die, so I'm good there. I wish that was the attack roll. And then here comes the attack roll. I am going to be shooting because the placement, and I did this on accident, but hey, that's the way it goes. She's going to be shooting at the lady who's opposite Ada from her, right? So does that mean the lady I'm shooting gets covered? Uh, from Ada? You're on top of it? Yeah, I'm up a little. But I think your height will... Uh, disallow the cover? Will disallow the cover. However, you still have disadvantage. Because? Because of something. Got it. Okay. Well, then. Um... Yeah, let's uh, let's take a shot with this two-shot pistol, and I'm going to do something cool. Uh, it's always fun to show what we made in the rules, right? So this two-shot pistol, I can tr I can pull both triggers at once to fire both barrels, right? Right. So here we go. Oh, okay. Oh, with That's disadvantage. With well. Yeah, with disadvantage. And I can well, yeah, I'm going to need that D4 in a sec because I rolled a 16 on the first step, but I forgot I had disadvantage, and I rolled a three on the second step. <laughs> Um, so let me just think about this. I am not going to use the before there, and I'm going to miss. Okay. So your shot goes wide, tearing out a large chunk of wood right next to Ada's head. <laughs> Ada's not having a good time. She's stressed out. She's going to start disappearing in a minute. Just a little off the top. <laughs> <laughs> at least it wasn't a one. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say at that point, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna need you to break Lucifer. Go ahead and do that, please. <laughs> uh, next on the list is Destan and uh, Cass, both going at the same time. You guys can decide amongst yourself who goes first. Dave, by all means. Um, I'm hearing, I, I've heard the shots yep. inside. Um, I'm going to assume that there's enough people in there to take care of whatever is going on. Um, what I would like to... So the guys on the spherical things are charging their weapons. It seems like that. So good, yeah. Can I... Can I signal them to stand down? Yes. So that will be my action. All right. And if they don't... Uh, if they don't... If they fire, then I will do whatever I can. But Make a what? charisma persuasion check, mm -hmm. and you can have advantage because of your uh, your status within the church. Okay, I got thirteen on the first roll. Oh, thirteen was my high. All right, um, you you see them hesitate, and they both look at each other. And it, you know, it seems for a moment like the, the lance tip dips, and then you know the uh, the other one, one of them shakes his head in negation, and they both like return it and bring the lances back up. Okay. Well, I I've I've done my action as such, so I can't yeah. retaliate. I will realize what's going on, and hold on tight. Okay. How do you feel about? Uh, uh, me missing an ability that would have been validated the whole thing, a non-optional ability that would have been hit. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about it or you just want to keep going for narrative? Uh, just bring it, no, bring it in next. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, next up we have Cass. Okay, I'm going to be a bit concerned for Anna, so I'm going to cast Shield of Fate at first level. And that will give her... Uh, I got a two plus on her AC. Oh, excellent, thank you. Just in case I shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, she has two feathers on her head, just one of them just went Pff. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, Anenki, you can see all of this going on outside, and even if you look down, you can probably see what's going on in there, at least a, uh, an obscured look at it. But... We got a decision to make. Okay. Um, there's plenty of people inside. The bigger threat appears to be the two um, 
two guys with a unicorn uh, <laughs> weapons. How far away from the side of the train are they? Uh, they are 50 feet away. Close. Right. They're, they're pretty quick, though, aren't they? Very quick, from what okay. you can see. They, they've been closing the gap. Actually, I haven't started. You imagine that they're going to be within striking distance, you know, very shortly. Okay. I would like to hold my action. Um, that when one of the, the bike things um, gets within 15 feet of the side of the train, um, then I'm going to act. Okay. So if, if that happens this round, then I'll, I'll I'll take my action. Then if it doesn't happen till next round, I'll, uh, I'll I'll just hang on until they're within fifteen feet. Fifteen feet. It's a magical number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> feet is a magical number. <laughs> but within okay, seven feet. You see the space between the trains. Ten feet. Or no? mm -hmm. Ten feet or more between the trains. I think that's probably good. Yeah. So that's actually. Good. Yeah, sure. okay. that works well. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, before Ada can go, uh, the the gyrospheres just come rolling on up, rushing up as they close the distance. Okay. Electricity begins arcing along the entire half of the lance, and then just an indiscriminate blast fires forward at. Uh, at the stock. I'm sorry, they're, they're 30 feet away. Okay. Pulling back. Actually, more like 20 feet. And then by 10 feet. By 10 feet. Yeah. It's probably at least, at least five feet between them. I just, that's cool. That's good. So at, at 30 feet away, which means, just to be clear, 5, 10, 15. <laughs> <laughs> None of them are within 15 feet of either of the ready dashes that are 15 feet. Yeah. So their, their lances have a range. That's so. called a mean GM range. <laughs> <laughs> um, so electricity arcs out along the lance, and one of the blasts fires forward uh, towards the stun, and the other one fires towards an enemy. Um, at least the primary shot. So each of you make. Uh, Dexterity saving throws. Oh, are those two guys not visible to you guys? That's a good thing to know. 18 total. All right, that's success. I did not uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a five. Uh, it's a Nike, and not you yet, I should say it. Oh, but, but okay. Hold on to that roll. No, no, no. I'll, that was not. Nope, 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 nope. I got a 15. Okay. Uh, both of you succeeded on your roll, so you sort of twist out of the way of the electricity. Uh, 13 lightning damage halved because you're both successful. Um, but as it strikes the targets, more uh, more arcs of electricity just strike out at people nearby. Uh, this is for Jaseya and DB and uh, and then uh, Destan and Anaki again. As each of the blasts, you know, uh, one was aiming at Destan and the other one was aiming at Anaki, but you're collateral to each other's blasts essentially. So you need to make Another roll. Here, I'll say I'm not Can you guys? Can you guys all see the soldier tokens, or you can't see them? No, can't see the soldier tokens. No, I we, they were so. they were there earlier when you first put the map on. I see the top mm. of the train. Mm. Sorry, let me, them in, let me delete them in Riyadh and see what's going on. I got a dirty twenty. Can you see them now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, weird. I don't know why they went away. Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, I got a 19 on that roll. Can I keep that one? <laughs> uh, that's a fine one. Yeah, you can keep it. I got a 14. Okay. That's you're all successful. Sweet. Um, uh, and it's another 13 damage. But how? Uh, but halved if you're successful. Yeah. Okay. 
Ouch. All right, uh, it is now Ada's turn. Ada, you are, are currently in the grasp of somebody, this, this woman that just moved really quickly. She doesn't have any any markings of a, one church that she can see. Okay, I'd like to bonus action Misty Step. Okay. And yeah, to go back to that. Uh, yeah, ideally, I think, yeah, 30 feet away from her, just as far away from her as possible, but obviously not into the snare of some impending danger. Okay. So wherever that would be in the carriage. Go back to the carriage. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And then I would like to... And you can actually, you should have control over your character, so you can move her within 30 feet of where she's at on DT. Oh, okay, that's cool. Except that no one can see any tokens anymore. What is happening here? All right, let me fix I'll this. I'll move her. So five, ten. Wow. Oh, I've yeah, disappeared. Boundary's being really strong right now. Out here. The drinks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast, um, I think, minor oh, illusion. Like um, maybe some glasses on the counter that sort of shields my head because I don't think I'm that tall. Some kind of the other side of the bar, but I've got to cast a minor illusion that sort of covers me. Oh, so you're gonna uh, try and blend into the scenery, exactly. extend, yes. extend the little... or maybe like a plant I could hide behind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's I'm a shrubbery. Be... Yeah, just like, some random potted plant just appears. But um, yeah, just basically trying to be as evasive as possible because that's why mm -hmm. I like to run away from things. I'm very. Uh... So Dave, could you bring us down to the bottom of the map too? That way we can see where she's specifically going to. I want to make sure her token's there too. This is good stuff for later, so we can make sure we do it right. Yeah. Um, and by we, I mean the mess with the kind of mess And there's the lady, and then go further. And she can't be seen for that. Cool, so I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> I don't know, I don't understand what Boundary's doing, no problem. Then uh, now she's back on the map. Is there that where you were, Ada? Uh, yeah, so I've moved myself to, yeah, by the bottom. I know, but I had to read, to I had to read what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. cool. I think I'll right. it out. Uh, top of the round, it's her turn. Uh, she quickly scans the room, uh, trying to see what where you went. Uh, that's a good point. Baron Snowhand makes a actually an undead corpse make about points. All three drinks now. That's true. Because the bartender ran away. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Free drinks! I don't know why they're trying to shoot anybody during combat. Priorities. Um, she doesn't seem to see Ada uh, for the moment, and so she actually makes an assumption and darts towards the ladder. Uh, Want to move? Yeah. So she's going to go... Uh, I was directly under the ladder. Yeah. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Keep going. She's going to go right there. Uh, you're, so you're in the way. I'm in the way of her getting up the ladder. Yep. So she's going to attempt to grab you. Uh, oh, actually, I guess I'm here anyway, so that's perfect. Okay. So she could she could try to squirrel by me with the ladder. Sorry, just to be quick, because I moved to jump up on the bar. Oh, because he moved. Okay. Yeah. So then she won't she won't try and grab you. Okay. Instead, she'll uh, go up the ladder. 5, 10, Another 20 feet. Yeah, ladders and that's, that's the end of her She's right at the top. She the top of the ladder. She gets to the top of the ladder. Yep. I will delete her from this map and put her on the top. All right, that's her turn. It is now just say it's turn. And they're still not in range? Um, so so here's the thing is, just to how you how you had it. This guy's technically even in 15 feet of her, but there's a train car here that's not on the map, so she can't go around it. Right. You know we, yeah. So, no, technically no one is in range. If you jumped on top of your badger belt, you would probably. No, no, because no, the badger's inside, but the door here is a wall there. Oh, right. right. Reverse, reverse these trains and put that yeah, up there. I just right. don't have two train cars. Right? Okay. So, the doorway only allows one person to pass through. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah. Can I shove Destan through the door? Well, you can do. What you could do is get on top of the other train car. And you would probably you'd be within range if you got to the side of the other train car, like on top of the roof. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. And there are ladders on the outside of the chart, the carriage that you can climb up. Okay, I will do that. 
And so then, right then there, she basically was like that boom. Yeah, yeah. And then you could just point your gun down and within range. Bam. Okay, so I will try that. And I assume a ladder is just like regular speed, correct? Right, because you're not, you know, you're not like climbing that whole rock with. Zip to equipment. Yeah, because this isn't going to be able to roll properly in the AD. So. So the ranged attack is what? Dex? Dex plus proficiency. Yeah. So, so 6 and 7, 19, 22. And the blunderbuss is a simple weapon, so you definitely have proficiency in it. So 22? 22. 22 is a hit. Are you using your normal gun, or are you going to use the uh, your special shot? I'm using my special shot. Okay. My Newman shots. Yes. So that is then, uh, where are we? There we go. It is 16 plus 14, 22. Uh, that is 12 damage plus whatever the blunderbuss normally does. I don't have it open because my computer does not want to run all that. 2d8. 2d8? Yep, 2d8 piercing. So 12, 13, so that would be a total of 25. 25 damage. So you, you point your blunderbuss, angling it down, you load it up with your special cartridge that you have to prepare every morning, and you fire your shot, and the bullet hits, you know, the, the, the shot hits, you know, sort of uh, in a spread, penetrating the armor, but his armor begins to melt away, and the flesh beneath it begins to sizzle and, and, and melt under the causticity of your, uh, of your specially created human shot. Yes. Uh, They're nice up. bullets. <laughs> or not next nice. Next up is ISO. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, just for the record, I should have hit the lady on the first shot because, as a Rice, I have advantage whenever an ally is within five feet of a person and I'm not, uh -huh. which would have countered the disadvantage into a regular shot. So, my 16 would have been. Now we know for the future, at least, right? So I want to go back to the bar real quick. Um, I guess I'm going to, as a bonus action, dash up the ladder uh -huh. and appear on the top right next to the lady. Right? Okay. So let me go back to this map again and drop myself. She she got up and out, I imagine. Yeah. So did she move in any direction off of the Yeah, she, right? she's going to move next to uh, the cat. Like that? Yeah. All right, so then I'll just go like this next to her. And um, I will try to shoot her in the face with my. Oh, so this is fun. So the rest of you, as she climbs up the ladder and she's holding onto her pistol, as she as she hurries up, like and still just climbs up while barely holding onto it, it um, it has a little contraption on the top of it that pulls down to a small box underneath it and reloads itself. It just goes and puts two bullets back in the So I will once again use both shots. And uh, roll a natural four. All right. So you're on great fun so far. Next. <laughs> I think you need new dice, Anthony. I don't. That's not how I operate. That's everyone else in our group. They're like, dice jail. And I'm like, that's not how math and science works. It's my only sovereign is science. <laughs> you, you guys continue with your dice stuff. Anyway, um, OK, go ahead. All right. So after ISO misses the shot, it is now the stun's turn. OK. Hmm. Well, they fired on us, so something's definitely not right. I will take aim on the uh, first one, the one that's kind of closest. Uh, if I can highlight them anyway. Um, and I will use my long rifle. Yeah, all right. So my long rifle has 2d6 damage, uh, plus six to hit, I believe. That gives me a dirty 20. 
That is definitely a hit. And uh, uh, 2d6. Mm-hmm. Boom. Roll. There we go. Ah, not good. Three, three damage. Three? Three. I got two and three a one. Damage. On two d6. Ouch. And uh, you didn't. Oh, yeah. You, don't you get your dex to it? You get. Uh, yeah, I think it, we get, you get your dex to Dex zero? Range uh, dex is plus one. So that's only four. Yes, four right. damage. Four damage. That's an increase of 33%. <laughs> He scored a, 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 a slight hit. Well, that's 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 that's, a, that's my first attack. Okay. So let's try a second attack. We'll do this again. Oh, extra attack. Uh, no, that was a seven. Oh. Seven to hit. A seven would be a miss. Yeah. You just really don't want to shoot them. It's a warning shot. Yeah. First one was to slow them down. The second one. Warning shot just past their ear so they know I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is Cass. What do you got? Uh, right, correct me if I'm wrong at any point, because I might be, but kind of showcasing what is possible in Lost Light. Due to my failing lineage, I have the prerequisite yeah. prerequisite of Trickster, which allows me to cast Phantasmal Force at second level. Yes. So can I, if I look out the window, can I see them? Uh, yes, you can now see them easily up. Okay. How, uh, my idea is to cast Phantasmal Force second level to make them think that there's a giant sand sinkhole forming, or if there's any kind of like giant worms, like make them think that something is going to be blocking their path. Uh huh. Yeah, so you're like something's emerging from the ground? Yeah, but in their path, so some just make them stop. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Go ahead and let me cast the spell. It's a. This is the first time I'm using Phantasmal Force, so if, if anyone can correct <laughs> me how, how it's working, by all means. Do they just have to make a saving throw? That's double checking that real quick. It's a wisdom safe. There you go, wisdom safe. Wisdom safe? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> can you. Uh, it takes well, really uh, mind of a creature. So it looks like you can only affect one of them. I will pick the one in front. There might. My yeah. hoping is that one of them stops and it get it gets he gets into the other. It's actually an intelligence saving throw. Good thing we can double check. Okay. So intelligence save. And what's your difficulty? What would my difficulty be? Uh, it would be your, uh, your. It's one inch. I don't yeah. know. It's proficiency plus your uh, wisdom modifier plus eight. Right. My wisdom modifier. Yeah. Oh shit, math. <laughs> uh, fourteen. That's about right. Fourteen. And that is a failure. Woohoo! So, uh, he quickly uh presses a uh, you know pulls back on a lever. Uh, that's you know on the uh, now to the top of the, the gyroscope and just comes to a complete stop like almost instantly, um, falling way behind the rest of them. So I'd say this one, yeah. As the train moves along, I'd say put them probably outside of the map, like a few feet back, just leaving for the moment. You can't really that much. Uh, so for the moment, yeah, he's he's out of the picture as. He Thank you. Has to readjust his path. Uh, <laughs> next up, we go an inch. Okay, so once once fallen behind, I'm on top of the carriage, and uh, that one looks like it should be within 15 feet. The one that's left on the map is three squares. If if you count it from the edge of the train, is that um, 
accurate, do you think? Uh, let's see. Two, yeah, three squares from the edge of the train, yes. Yeah. So from where I was laying down on the top of the train, um, I'm going to run to the edge of the train, leap off the edge of the train, with oh. the intention of landing onto the, uh, the bike. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is going to be epic. Well, this is going to be... Uh, uh, um, do you want to take that as a cliffhanger? <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say, do you want to resolve that now, or do you want to just... Yeah, let's, so yeah, uh, Anenki stands to his feet and, and races towards the edge of the train, oh my God. leaping in the air, uh, trying to... The sight of that, too, this <laughs> eight and a half, nine percent. Right. It's wow. monstrous in jumping out. We, we uh, jumping off the moving axe. train. Uh, oh, with his axe or bless? Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that, that I think, is, is an appropriate... <laughs> that is a <laughs> fabulous <laughs> cliffhanger. Uh, yeah, thank you, Perfect. Steve. <laughs> I should be sacrificing many dice between now and next Sunday. <laughs> no. Big, big axe energy. Um, cool. Thanks, guys. I, I had a lot of fun. That's a good start, a good setup. I like how we got a lot of our characters' uh, personalities out early in that, so that's what it was. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. <sighs> yeah, that was amazing. So for fun. hosting us. Yeah, that was very good. So, so over to you, Dave. That's your time. sign off. Here. Yeah, uh, everybody. It's uh, half past midnight here in the UK, so we're going to wrap it up there. Please join us again next Sunday for our second episode. We're doing four of these. Um, as Darius and <laughs> I did say it again, Isaac again, uh, Anthony uh, are going to launch this on Kickstarter. In the next few weeks so stay tuned for that if you like this this is just the tip of the iceberg of everything that they have created for this world um it is amazing so well as soon as we get the uh, kickstarter holding page we will let you know as soon as we know that the actual kickstarter launch date we will let you know and we'll get all those messages out there so stay tuned for both uh, band of badger socials and sidequest press socials they've been going up and down in live chat so do check them out and on that cliffhanger and we will see you again next week. See you then. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.